Right, welcome to this Codex review for Astra Militarum. A lot of people have been asking for this one, uh, so I uh, finally got around to doing it here uh, for the Astra Militarum. So it's going to be a Codex review, uh, review the book, uh, talk about the army, and then uh, there'll be Tactica in here as well. So I'm going to pick out units I think are pretty good, uh, combinations and so on. We'll take a look at the Warlord traits and stratagems uh, now available, and relics uh, available as well now for the Astra Militarum. This is an army on the rise. James's army uh, recently has been doing very, very well indeed. It's one of the toughest armies out there. So what a reversal. Uh, Imperial Guard would, got hammered hard uh, in 7th edition, but now uh, they're coming back with vengeance, which is, which is good. Uh, it's great to have a challenge now uh, with them on the toughest armies. So all the other armies taking them on uh, will have a tough challenge ahead. So now when you see a battle report featuring Astra Militarum, it's not like, a, oh, we're just going to watch the guard being defeated here. It's, it's now a case of who can take the guard on. They're tough enough. So I've got mine from GamingFigures.com. You can get yours direct from Games Workshop, uh, or you go to uh, one of the companies like Gaming Figures. They do uh, Games Workshop products, but at a reduced rate, uh, so you can check them out. That's where I get my uh, codexes and miniatures and accessories from and then game figures they do uh, other uh, ranges as well so all the accessories and paints from different companies different miniatures uh, and uh, models as well so this will be quite a long review I'd imagine Astra Militarum one of the larger 40k uh, armies so there'll be some areas of semi skip uh, just to keep things rolling along uh, as much as I can this is a review of the whole book as well, so I'll flick through all of the early pages here. So I used to collect Imperial Guard, uh, James and I together really, and then James has semi taken over running those, so he's reorganised them, uh, he's added more units to it, so Guard have really become uh, James's focus. Uh, but that original colour scheme, the grey colour scheme that you see, that's the colour scheme that I put together some time ago. That's quite a while ago now, but now James has since taken over uh, the guard. Although his regiment, there are questions over their loyalty. Rumours of heresy abound. <laughs> it's a running theme on the, <laughs> the channel at the moment. So all your organisations here, it's great to see these codexes come back with all of the uh, the organisation and background information they used to have, so really, really good. All the structure here, brilliant regimental organisation, so you can completely lay out your force uh, exactly how you want them to be. Yes, uh, tank companies here, first company, second, third, company HQ. This is all like it's all like a World War II layout here. Really good, recon squad, anti-aircraft squadrons, heavy company. The Bane Blade. Yeah, and the great thing about Guard now is you can build a fluffy themed army and they can do really well, still do really good, which is a uh, well, uh, congratulations to Games Workshop for making the rules that you can build a nicely themed army and yet, and yet it is uh, effective and tough in a game, which is good. So, uh, Katakan uh, Regiment here. I wish Games Workshop would do the other regiments in plastic. But they haven't as yet. I'm hoping for the day that they do. If if and when they do, I will collect my own uh, guard force if they release them in plastic. Uh, Armageddon Steel Legion. Vost Vostroya. Valhans, which I would collect those in a heartbeat and do a nice um, snow landscape colour scheme of them. The old school painting scheme, I reckon. Look fantastic. Uh, Talon Desert Raiders would have to collect them as well if they're in plastic, so I think they look fantastic as well. And then Regiments of Distinction, uh, Orc Hunters, Pikers, Third Armageddon, Children of Ganfoss, nice, they look really nice as well, There's some great themes here. Shrouded Ones. Nice. Well, you could use your Skatari heads there for them, for sure. Morty Nine Guard. Yeah. Big fan of them as well. Ten in first and only. And then uh, the Savlar Regiment there as well. Savlar Chem Dogs. Yeah. 
Oh, Miasmin red, red Cows is the name of those. Aphonian Tunnel Rats. Armageddon um, Nork Hunters. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, there's more here. The Ventrillian Nobles. Which I got all excited about these when I saw the pictures. Well, I thought, oh wow, Games Workshop have finally got around to doing Plastic Guardsmen. But they hadn't. It's all a kit bash. It's a combination of, you have to buy all these different kits. And they work out like £100 just to a unit of 10. <laughs> which is mad. Madness. But they, they are a brilliant theme for those. They'd look really good uh, allied to something else. Uh, Indigen Prefix as well. Another uh, combination you have to go for. You take Skitari kits and then other uh, parts from other uh, kits as well. Got Morden Acid Dogs, which like, looks like a combination of Cadian uh, and Ketacans together there. The Fayburn Vanquishers. Resh Grenadiers. Truscan Snowhounds. <laughs> wow. Armoured Regiments as well, famous Armoured Regiments. Lysian Eagles. There's so much scope here. Really nice artwork they've added in. Time scale. Here are uh, campaigns and battles of note, famous artwork on the really nice ones. It's Creed, Cal. Company commanders writes as a unit. Background information for each of these as well, platoon commanders, infantry squads, veterans, heavy weapons. Tower Oxys, they're featured in here. Chimeras, Sentinels, Hellhounds, Hydras, Ordnance, Batteries, different types, Death Strikes, Manticores, haven't seen that picture before. Liam Ross's different uh, variants of those we'll cover later on. Super heavies are in here. Wow, look at all these. <gasps> if, you want more info, if you want more guard, fluff, and organization, and magnetizing videos, then check out James's channel because he's starting to upload some great videos, especially for organization, magnetization. Uh, that, he's got his own review of this codex as well. Um, so check out his channel, uh, JB Wargamer 87 and you can see what he's getting up to uh, on his channel as well. There's a link on my channel homepage to that, but check him out for that. He's working on some nicely, nice fluffy themed Imperial Guard lists, ones that you've never seen on the channel, some big surprises, and uh, looking forward to seeing those in battle. Lord Castle and Creed, Knight Commander Task. Iron Hand Strachan, Gunnery Sergeant Harker, Warriors of the Faith, this is your priests here, Servants of the Omnissiah, and there's Harren Tempestus, Valkyries, Commissars, Garrick, Ogrins, Dead Dog, Rattlings, Primary Psychers, Windvane Psychers, Regimental Advisors, <laughs> the list goes on. Then uh, here is uh, your uh, pictures here, photographs, painting reference, very, very helpful. See, I can't bring myself to do caddins. This is what blocks me off from doing Imperial Guard. James has caddins. I can't launch out and start collecting mine. I, can't, I just don't want to get the lead ones uh, of the other regiments that are, you can still pick up on eBay and so on. So I'm just waiting for the day when uh, Plastic Guard regiments come out. Um, so... Uh, yeah, there's layouts here of these different forces, Desert Raiders, they do look great. Catacan, Jungle Fighters there. Yeah, there they are. The Ventrillion Nobles, they do look great. I have to say, they look fantastic. Yeah, and they do look good. Bostrians, nice models, but they're in lead. There. There's a an army. I hope that's not 2,000 points. <laughs> that's a big force. Alright, so we're on to the rules then. That's coming up to two thirds of the way through the codex, so plenty of background information on page 84 now. Uh, so that's what you can get inside, uh, and then we're on to the rules. Okay, so, uh, it talks about regiments here. Um, so you remember you're choosing your regiment type, and then the, the bonuses and abilities uh, have to apply to them, so it's probably wise to take the same regiment throughout. Well, you can split, but bear in mind you're not be able to cross over with the uh, bonuses and so on. Something to be aware of. So, voice of command. Uh, 
this unit may issue one order per turn to the soldiers under their command at the start of the shooting phase. That's where the orders start now. Orders may only be issued to infantry units within six of this unit that have the same regiment keyword. Remember, we've got to keep the regiment the same. To issue an order, pick a target unit, choose which order you wish to issue from the table below. Uh, a unit may only be affected by one order per turn. So you can't stack the orders up on one unit. It's only one per unit. So these are the new orders then. Uh, some are familiar, some they've adjusted. So take aim, reroll, hit rolls of one for all models in the ordered unit until the end of the phase, it's straightforward. Uh, first rank fire, second rank fire, all las guns and all hot shot las guns in the ordered unit change their type to rapid fire two until the end of the phase. So rapid fire two it means you will get uh, four shots at range twelve of las guns. Nice. And the hot shot las guns as well, helpful for them. So that's really helpful, that roll. Bring it down. Reroll wound rolls of one for all models in the order unit to end of the phase. Helpful for like heavy weapons teams, for example. Forwards for the Emperor, the order unit can shoot this phase, even if it advanced in its movement phase. Get back in the fight, the order unit can shoot this phase, even if it fell back in its movement phase. Helpful. So you can pull out of combat and shoot, for example. Move, move, move. Instead of shooting this phase, the order unit immediately makes a move as if it was the movement phase. It must advance as part of this move and cannot declare a charge during the turn. So you need to get a unit somewhere quick. So even on foot, guard can move quick enough. And in fixed bayonets, this order can only be issued to units that have an inch of the enemy unit. The ordered unit immediately fights as if it were the fight phase. Nice. So the, the orders are brilliant. Really, really good. They're just brilliant rules. So I can see why guard players are taking like four company commanders and just chucking out orders all over the place. It's just worth, it's so worth doing it. Massive enhancements there. So it's a, a key aspect of, if you're going to collect guard, is take advantage of these uh, orders here. So uh, you choose your regiment and here are some unique orders, some fluffy orders to match in with each of those regiments. So. Interest RIC, yeah, pound them to dust, which James has used multiple times. It's a Cadian tank order, uh, specifically for tanks. The duration of the phase, you can reroll the dice when determining the number of attacks the ordered model can make with turret weapons, as described in the grinding advance ability, uh, that use a randomly determined number. Okay, so like heavy D6, roll dice, oh, I've got a one, you can reroll if you wish. Helpful. Uh, Ketter can then burn them out. You can reroll the dice and determine the number of attacks the order unit can make with flamers and heavy flamers to the end of the phase. So that makes that reliable. You're more likely then to choose that kind of weaponry. So that helps. In addition, units targeted by models from the order unit with these weapons do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. Yep. Burn them out. Pretty good. Uh, Valhallen. Fascinating to see what you get here. The order unit can shoot at enemy units that are within an inch of friendly units till the end of the phase. But each time, that's fire in my command, this is, but each time you roll a hit of a one for such an attack, resolve the attack against a friendly unit within an inch instead <laughs> of the target. You may choose which friendly unit is hit. This order may be issued to unit, may not be issued to units within an inch of an enemy unit. Okay. Right, so you've got one unit in combat, the other units can fire in. If you're only ones, you're going to hit your own friends. Vostrin, repel the enemy. To the end of the phase, the order unit can fire any of its weapons whilst within an inch of the enemy, regardless of the weapon's type. If they do so, they must target enemy units within an inch, even if friendly units are within an inch of these units. Okay, so, repel the enemy, similar kind of rules. Uh, mount up, this is Ram again, Steel Legion. To the end of the phase, the order unit can shoot and then immediately embark within a friendly Armageddon transport vehicle. Wow. Nice. As long as all models are within three inches of the vehicle. So this is encouraging you to go for that infantry chimera combination. And fantastic rule. The order may not be issued to a unit which disembarked in the preceding movement phase. Ah, right. So you can't disembark, fire and get back in. Okay. Tanaran is a tank order. The order model can move up to six inches in this phase. Either before or after it shoots as if it were the movement phase. This does not affect how far the vehicle has moved for the purposes of determining how many times it can fire its turret weapon. 
as described in the grinding advance ability above. Okay. Okay. So, get around behind them. Okay, yeah, it's like a Desert Raider uh, equivalent there. So you've got a bit more speed with your vehicles. Or models. This is an ordered model. Can move up to six. Cool. Nice. Uh, Militarum Tempestus. Elimination protocol sanctioned. You can reroll failed wound rolls models from the unit when attacking any enemy vehicles or monsters this phase. Reroll wounds. That is helpful. Especially with a low strength. Uh, hot shot less guns. So brilliant rule that one. Good order. And then Mordian. Form firing squad. <laughs> to the end of the phase, the order unit can target characters with their rapid fire weapons, even if they are not the closest enemy unit. Wow. Nice. Very, very, very good. The order units, any type of units, you give it to every weapons team. I believe, yeah. Very good. Okay. Now, yep, yes, you can give it to a weapon squad, it's to any infantry squads. You can't get a tank to become an assassin for killing characters, but infantry squads can receive those orders, unless it says tank order, which a few of these are tank orders. Okay, there is another rule here, grinding advance. Lean Russ's tank sturdy frame allows it to keep up to fearsome rate of firepower, even as it advances on the foe. If the model moves under half speed in the movement phase, uh, it can shoot its turret weapons twice in the following shooting phase. Phew. Same target though. Furthermore, hit rolls for the model's turret weapon do not suffer the penalty for moving and shooting a weapon. The following weapons are turret weapons and it lists them for you there. So, very very good, fire twice. Yeah, I've experienced that. James has uh, been oh so happy to fire twice with his uh, Russ is just there. And you combine that with your Cadian tank order, pound them to dust. You've got some very reliable, heavy amount of firepower. The games actually virtually doubled the effectiveness of the Lim Russ tanks. Yep. But it's only turret weapon. It's the turret weapon's crucial uh, for the Russ, whichever one you go for. Alright, so on to HQs then. Uh, Castellan Creed. He is. 70 points, it's cheap enough. Add movement 6, web skill, blister skill 3, plus strength and toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership run, 4 up saves, power level 4. Um, subscribers have been asking me to mention the power levels, so power level 4. Uh, 2 hot shot less pistols and a power sword. So the hot shot less pistol will just cover that range 6, pistol 1, strength 3, AP minus 2. And then the power sword, usual rules for that. It's got the 5 plus invun save, the refractor field. Tactical genius. If your army is battle forged, you can receive an additional two command points if he is your warlord. Pretty good. And then Supreme Commander. Castellan Creed's voice of command ability has a range of 12, and you may use this ability three times in each of your turns. Resolve the effects of the first or before issuing the second, and so on. He's just a souped up uh, commander now. So then you've got regular company commander. So maybe a comparison between these two. So uh, he's power level 2. Company commando is 30 points. Very, very cheap. Same stat line as above. Yep, exactly the same. Just leadership's 8 instead of 9, and a 5 up save instead of a 4 up. So this, the company commanders are a, a bargain here. Yeah, really good. Uh, Laz pistol, the chain sword. Frag, uh, just frag grenades, no crack grenades. You may take a chainsaw, or you can go onto the melee weapons list if you wish. You may want to, he's free up to hit in combat, and he's, aren't, he's uh, free attack, so it might be an idea. I would imagine you just take him for his abilities. Uh, it's two voice of commands a turn. Yep, does come with a 5 plus invon, and that's it. So you just take him for his bonuses, and the bonuses is uh, the ability to issue the orders. 30 points, very, very cheap indeed. Very, very cheap. If you do want to go for upgrades on him, you probably want him to keep him out of trouble, out of combat, and just to have him issue as many orders as you can, in which case you're not really going to give him any upgrades. Um, but we'll see what options he has. So melee weapons, you can give him a power sword, four points. 
uh, or yeah, four points, or you can give him a power fist, which is ten points. It's, that's not bad. Nowhere near what it used to be. Ten points is cheap enough. Uh, power fist. Times two strength, AP minus three, and D three damage. It's minus one to hit. You could go for that. I think there's better ways to damage your opponent. Um, but 10 points is cheap and enough, not too bad at all. That's your melee options, and then you can go for uh, ranged weapons. Bolt pistol, bolt gun, plasma pistol, uh, if you really want to. Plasma pistol, maybe. S uh, 7 points, I'd imagine. 5 points, right, so 5 points spare, just give him a plasma pistol. You can, you can fire that from behind units you see and then just cause trouble that way so that is an option to take just there all right so that's his options but no, I'd, I'd, I'd use company commanders and just use them for the rules uh, for the orders that they're able to do two orders a turn and uh, I've seen guard players now taking a number of company commanders you know two three four five of them it definitely seems like a good idea really good no that's fine so company commanders are good idea. I can't see much point other than for pride for taking Creed. Just for the sake of an extra order. Not really. No, it's, yeah, so I'd go for regular company commanders, I think. So, a tank commander here uh, is 167 points. We'll see what that includes. That's a, a fair jump in the cost for taking one of these. So, if you look here, here's a character but he can still be targeted because he's got 12 wounds. So um, they are a bit vulnerable in that regard. There, but it's a tank, it's tough enough. So the rush then, weapon skill six plus, strength seven, toughness eight. See, rushes are tough. 12 wounds, leadership seven to free up to save. Uh, when they take damage, their movement drops. Movement 10, oh, quick enough. Um, then movement 10, drops to 7, then to 4, and it's ballistic skill that's effective, 3 up becomes 4 up becomes 5 up, and the attacks drop, but that's insignificant. Um, so, not too bad. Alright. So the tank commander is a single model. He rides to battle from the coupler of a Limoros battle tank. He is equipped with a battle cannon and a heavy bolter. Right, that's probably the central sponsor on the tank. So, you have to add in the heavy bolter, eight points on top of that and then the battle cannon is 22 so you add that in as well so they're not cheap they're not cheap okay so battle cannon range 72 heavy d6 we'll cover these weapons now and then that was um, maybe we won't have to cover them later on it's just so we know the rules uh, from the start here. So battle cannon range 72, heavy d6, strength 8, AP minus 2 and d3 damage, it's a good weapon. And the ability to uh, potentially reroll that dice, potentially to fire twice with that, effectively 2d6 shots, it's fantastic. Strength 8 is really good, freeze to win most vehicles. d3 damage, yes, but the volume of it coming through, so decent enough. Then go for a demolisher cannon, these are power level 12 by the way, right for these. Demolish your cannon, range 24, so shorter range, heavy D3, potential to fire twice, strength 10, AP minus 3 and D6 damage, I still rate the demolish cannon, really is quite nasty, yeah, okay, so uh, demolish your cannon, is 40 points to take that, the eradicator nova cannon, range 36, heavy D6, strength 6, AP minus 2 and D3 damage, no bonus for cover, Decent enough. They're all decent now. Ability to fire twice, they're all good. The execution of plasma cannon. God, brilliant for bringing down things like marines. Uh, and terminators. Heavy D6, range 36, strength 7, AP minus 3. And if you overcharge or supercharge, it's uh, strength 8, minus 3, and 2 damage. If uh, you roll 1s, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. So it's not so bad for vehicles. Plasma weaponry, I think, is better on vehicles. So not so bad, that one. Uh, the Exterminator Auto Cannon, range 48, heavy 4, 
Strength 7, AP minus 1, and 2 damage. Maybe a weaker option that one. Yeah, so of all of those, or oh, there's others here, there's the. Oh, let's have a look. Punisher Gatling Cannon. Heavy 20, strength 5, no minus on the AP and 1 damage, so that's heavy 40 potentially. <laughs> 40 shots. Uh, the Vanquisher Battle Cannon, range 72, heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 3, and D6 damage. Uh, you roll two dice, choose the best for damage. So it's alright, but it's one shot weapon. So out of all of those, I would choose the regular battle cannon's fine, the demolish cannon's good as well, and the execution of plasma's nasty enough. It really is horrid. No, so yeah, I rate the demolisher and better than the regular battle cannon. Yeah, okay, so that's those. So then you've got uh, options for. Uh, sponsors here as well. Just get some points costs. Eradicator or exterminator auto cannon is 25. Execution of plasma cannon is 20. Pretty good. And the eradicator nova cannon is 25. And the plasma is pretty good. Half the price of the demolisher. Okay. Uh, this model may replace its battle cannon with, and we've already gone through all of those. Uh, the model may replace its heavy bolter with uh, heavy flamer or a las cannon. Do you know, I would, the combination I would go for now is, I think this would make sense to do it, and that, yeah, I reckon so. So, uh, you take a last can on the front, for example, you paid, let's have a look, last can at 20 points, heavy bolter is 8 points. One last can on the front, Sponson. Um, you know, it's forced to hit, it's one shot, and it's 20 points you've spent. The, the, the strength now for us is, is that turret weapon, so I would put the anti-tank nasty weapon on the turret, and then for the, the other stuff I would just either go minimal, which is just the heavy bolter and no sponsons, uh, or you could go just heavy bolters all round and then just put the nasty weapon on top. You can split your fire now, so you can fire your nasty weapon off at a heavier target, and then your heavy bolters just to fire at softer targets and play it that way. And it helps keep the cost of the vehicle down, so I'd maybe go down that route. Uh, if you're expecting hordes to pour up against you, then maybe you could just swap everything out for heavy flamers. And just sit there, firing away with your heavy weapons, and when the opponent charges, they get hit by a ton of overwatch from heavy flamers. It's another option you can go for. Yep, or if hordes get too close, you can advance out, get within eight, let loose of your flamer weapons, and then if you're charged, let loose of the flamer weapons again. Heavy flamer, 17 points a time though. Maybe helpful as well if you plan to advance with your tank force, and expecting to, to move in close to the opponent, protect yourself with a bit of heavy flamer options. If you get ambushed and charged, counter charged, and so on, then you've got the overwatch ability there, so that's a combination that might work quite well. No, it's the turret weapon I think is the focus. Uh, yeah, so heavy flamers then, last guns are 20, heavy flamers 17, heavy bolters 8. This model may replace the two heavy bolters, two heavy flamers. This model may take two heavy bolters, two heavy flamers, two multi-melters, or two plasma cannons. So, Plasma Cannons is 15 each, which isn't too bad. Because that is, yeah, it's D3 shots, it's not bad. No, it's okay. So it's D3 shots, then usual Plasma rolls to strength 7, open minus 3, or overcharge to strength 8, minus 3, and 2 damage. So that may well be an option, yep. And then the multi melters, if you can get uh, within 12, it's range 24, heavy 1, strength 8, minus 4, d6 damage. If it's within half, you're all two dice, choose the best. Oh, no, 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 see, it's d6, yeah, no matter what range you're in. So. I just, I, I watch guard players, I watch James play, and he goes, right, multi melter, rolls the dice, missed again. And it's that kind of, oh, I've spent out the points to pay for a decent weapon. 
it's going to miss half the time, which is the problem. You're paying out multi melt to 20 points a time. Yeah, you know, so if you go less cannon two multi melters, that's 60 points paid out there. I'm thinking. What I'm kind of thinking is, you take three tanks, you give them all multi melters, less cannons, pay out a lot of points. It's enough points paid out there to afford if you drop them, took heavy bolters, you virtually pay for a fourth tank with that turret weapon. That's the kind of saving I'm thinking of. You're getting the bonus of the, all the wounds of the extra model and the extra turret weapon and then your, your emphasis is on that ability to fire twice. So that's the kind of logic I'm thinking of here. Now, you have got access to vehicle equipment as well. Now, vehicle equipment, so we'll check these out here. The Augur Array is first, it's uh, 10 points. Once per battle in the shooting phase, you can reroll a single failed hit roll for a vehicle with an Augur Array. No way. A single failed hit roll. No, I couldn't do that. Not for 10 points. So I don't think I'll bother with that one. The Dozer Blade. Uh, if a vehicle with Dozer Blade charges in the charge phase, add one to hit rolls made for it until the end of the ensuing fight phase. Oh, no way. How much is that? Five points. No, I don't think I bothered with that either. Uh, heavy stubber. Right, it's so just got that weapon option that you can take if you wish, uh, which is four points for the heavy stubber. Which is uh, just here. Heavy free, strength four. AP0, 1 damage, range 36. Yeah, so if you want a little bit extra firepower, uh, probably wouldn't bother with that. But if you've got some spare points, you can. The Hunter Killer Missile, which I think is a brilliant idea, will be uh, in here with the ranged weapons. Yeah, it's only 6 points. It's well worth it. I'm going to try and give it to all my rhinos, so well worth taking. Range 48, fantastic range, heavy one. Strength 8, minus 2 and d6 damage. One use only, so... Yeah, no, I take Hunter Killer Missile for sure. Storm Bolter, yeah, it can add that on. You can't combine it with a heavy stubber. And Track Guards. Track Guards. 10 points. Hmm. The vehicle track guards always counts as having its starting number of wounds when determining its move characteristic. Ah, right, so you never slowed down. Nice. No, it's 10 points to do it, but it depends what theme of an army you're going for. If you're just playing defensively, I probably wouldn't bother with that. But if you're an attacking based army and you want to get somewhere quick and you're on the move, then track guards is worth taking. It's pretty interesting rules there. Um, so that's all of that, and that, all these rules we've covered here, that's going to apply to all these vehicles coming later on. Uh, there's tank orders here, available. Interesting. So, grinding advance, which we've covered, explodes, usual rules, smoke launchers once per game, uh, you activate those, your opponent's minus one to hit. Tank orders, which we'll cover in just a moment. Emergency plasma vents, interesting, if this model fires a supercharged plasma cannon, you're order one. It is not automatically destroyed. Instead, for each order of one, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. Right, so they've resolved that. That's fantastic. So, that's well done. So, uh, tank orders then. Full throttle. Instead of shooting this phase, the order model immediately moves as if it was the movement phase. It must advance as if it was part of the movement phase. Right, so get that advanced nice and quick. Gunners kill on sight. Three roll ones to the end of the phase. Right, so this is what you can issue to other tanks, and then strike and shroud. This order can be issued to a model that has not yet used its smoke launchers. The ordered model can shoot, and then fire smoke launchers. I've seen James do that a number of times. Yeah, it's all helpful enough. So tank commanders, uh, pretty good. Yeah, and the major thing about him is ballistic skills three plus. So just that bit better uh, for shooting. So it's great, no problem at all. Right, so uh, knight commander pass. 
So uh, he's 177 points. It's not that much more really uh, than a uh, regular tank commander. Uh, so it's just uh, power level 13 for him. Just looking to see uh, any differences. Yeah, ballistic skill 2 plus. That's the big uh, bonus for him. 2 plus. Wow, I mean, the weaponry you could mount on him. It's well worth taking Pask. For sake of. I think it's 10 points difference. He's fantastic, yeah. So, uh, you can issue orders to a friendly Cadian Lim Rush at the start of your shooting phase to issue a tank. Order, pick a target Lehman Russ within six, then that commander pass can choose which order you wish to issue from the table to the right. Each Lehman Russ can only be given a single order per turn. So it's Cadians. Uh, Knight Commander Pask may use the tank order's ability twice in each of your turns. Resolve the effects of the first before the second. Nice. Now he's really good. Yep, and the rules are the same. Yes, for the orders. So yeah, now I go for Pask, no problem at all. Yep, definitely. Right, so Commissar Yarrick, who is power level 7. He's 130 points, and that's all you pay. That's, that's all included in the points cost. Movement 6, 2 plus, weapons gun, ballistic skills, strength 3, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 4 up save. He's armed with bolt pistol, storm bolter, power claw, and ball eye. Ball eye is range 6, pistol, strength 3, minus 2. That's it. Storm Bolter, usual rules, Bolt Pistol, Power Claws, times 2 strength, Vapor minus 3 and D3 damage, and it's minus 1 to hit. So beyond freeze to hit, free attacks. Uh, he's, not, he's not utterly amazing. Aura of Discipline. Astromid time units within 6 of a friendly Commissar can use the Commissar's leadership instead of their own, which is 9. Iron Will, roll a D6 each time Yarek loses his final wound. 1 free plus, that wound is not lost. Ah. Right, so each time he loses his final wound on a free plus, that wound is not lost. So he's restored with just a wound remaining. Yeah, uh, he's got four plus invent. Hero of Hades Hive. You can reroll hit rolls of one. Made for friendly astromed time units within six of Yarrick. You may reroll any failed hit rolls for friendly astromed time units within six of Commissar Yarrick when attacking orcs. <laughs> Summary execution. Uh, Ashram time units within six for friendly Commissar never lose more than one model as a result of a single failed route test. Okay. So effectively, you only ever take one model off and that represents him executing one and the others holding their ground. So yeah, Yarrick seems fine. Yeah, pretty good. Lord Commissar. Cheaper option. 50 points. Wow. Much, much cheaper option. Very, very cheap. Uh, four up save, same stat line as above. Still two plus weapon skill, ballistic skill. Bolt pistol, power sword, so you've four points you've got to add them to that. But very cheap, you've got access to melee and ranged weapons, as we've seen earlier. He's got the aura of discipline as above. Summary execution as well, and a five plus in one. Nice, no, give him a power sword. And very cheap. Very, very cheap indeed. Uh, that's Power level four, by the way, for him. Cool. Nice bargain, him. Company commanders and the Lord Commissars are very cheap. Uh, Iron Hand Strachan. It's power level four as well. Two plus for weapon skill, three plus ballistic skill, strength six, toughness four, five wounds, four attacks. He's good stat line, leadership nine and three up save. He's armed with uh, plasma pistol, shotgun, frag grenades, crack grenades, a bionic arm with devil's claw. So plasma pistol. He you don't add up you don't add any of these in. He just comes with uh, his walk in. He's 75 points. Very, very cheap in points cost. That stat line's fantastic. Free up save. Uh, so the plasma pistol we know, shotgun. Um, it's plus one strength within half range, it's range 12, assault two, strength three. The devil's claw is strength for the user, which is strength 6, it's AP minus 1 and 2 damage, which is good enough. Uh, then, been there, seen it, killed it. You can reroll foul wound rolls for striking in the fight phase when attacking enemy monsters. Okay, he's got 5 plus in one. Uh, Cold Steel and Courage, all models in friendly catch units have been 6. A Vine Hand Strachan at the start of the fight phase, uh, make one additional attack. Nice. Yeah, helpful. 
take things like Borgrins or something, have, have him with them, grant the extra attack, so. Strachan's a great senior officer. See, I like him because he's got his plasma pistol and he can hide behind stuff and then let out those shots of that weapon as well. And then his combat ability is great. It's great to have mixing him with the units. It's nice bonuses here. Senior officer, uh, it's two orders a turn. Yeah, nice. So Strachan's a hit. I think he is very good a lot, I'm sure. A lot of cat Catacan players will be happy with that. Strachan is good. Right, so uh, Tempesta Prime, what I'm going to do in this review is the Militarum Tempestus, I'm going to leave them out because uh, no doubt they're going to get their own codex uh, and then it will make sense to review those units in with the codex uh, and then they'll have their own warlord traits and stratagems and so on uh, all inside that specific codex, I think it's the best idea. So the Tempestus stuff, save that for a separate video and that means if you're interested in these guys, then check out that separate video when the new codex uh, comes along for them. So, Tempesta Prime, uh, Primaris Psychers them, uh, power level two, um, 28 points each. Force Stave, I wonder how much you have to pay for this. Is 12 points, so you're looking at f uh, 40 points then each for these. Primary Psyker. Yep, last pistol as well. The stave is plus two strength, minus one the AP and D3 damage. Uh, regular stat line really does come with three attacks, four wounds, five up save. He has three plus for his weapon skill and ballistic skill. So it's for your own good. If this model is slain the result of perils of the warp whilst within six of a friendly commissar, they're executed before anything untoward can happen. The power they're attempting still fails, but units within six do not suffer the mortal wounds. Cool, nice and fluffy. Good rule that. Uh, he can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one. He knows smite and two psychic powers from the uh, Psychana discipline. We'll cover those uh, psychic powers a bit later on. But uh, cheap enough to get a, a uh, psyker there into your force. Right, so guardsmen, infantry. Four points each. Could they ever get any cheaper? <laughs> Four points. It's an absolute bargain. You need a 10. 40 points. So, so cheap. So, just the usual guardsman stat line. Uh, not going to run through it there. Um, they're armed with las gun, frag grenades. Uh, nothing's changed for these. Uh, so, uh, it's a, a unit of uh, a one sergeant, nine guardsmen. And it's Laz Pistol and Frank Grenades for the Sergeant. So the Vox Caster, you may take a Vox Caster, obviously you've got to pay for it, I believe. If a friendly officer within three inches of unit with Vox Caster when using their voice of command, uh, you may extend the range of the order to 18 if the target also contains a Vox Caster. So if you're networking and command and control, it helps uh, to have that uh, available. Five points though to take it. Okay. Two guardsmen may form a heavy weapons team who must then take a heavy uh, weapon. So, go back to here. Heavy weapons, uh, mortar. Uh, so, uh, mortar. It's five points. They look great. I love the look of the mortars, but they are terrible. Well, I'm not going to say terrible because uh, guard players do use them now. Heavy D6, strength four. You can't. You can target units that the opponent can't. Or you can target units that are not visible to the bearer. Range 48 is helpful. It is helpful. Units hiding away. Yeah, like a battery, like a, a heavy weapons team. Three of them. Three D6 shots. At strength four. You can target whoever you want, uh, even if they're out of sight. Um, it's fine. It's so cheap. Very, very cheap, so it you know, bulks an army out five points at a time. Very, very cheap indeed. Uh, your other heavy weapon options is uh, the auto cannon, which is 15 points now. Mmm. Sure, they used to be 10. So maybe they've gone up, but auto cannon's uh, nasty enough. Range 48, heavy 2 strength, 7 AP minus 1, and 2 damage. Nice 
anti-terminator stuff there with them. Uh, a bit of an all-rounder, the auto cannon. Pirate vehicles there and pick up damage as well. So that's an option uh, there. Then uh, the heavy bolter, which is seen. Points cost is eight for that. Uh, it's free shots. Just cover these just for new players. Um, so uh, heavy bolter is here. You get free shots. Range 36, strength 5, AP minus 1. It's decent enough uh, for eight points worth taking. Missile launcher. That is 20. Yeah, it is 20 points. But it's a nasty bit of anti-tank there. Uh, heavy D6 range, this is frag. Uh, it's for strength 4, no minus, and it's 1 damage. Or you can go for crack missile, which is range 48, heavy 1, strength 8, minus 2, D6 damage. That's okay. Um, but I would say the Laz Cannon at 20 points as well is probably uh, worth taking instead. If you're going to go for anti-tank, you know, Worth just doing it properly. The less cannon is the better weapon. Uh, the less cannon comes in at range 48, heavy one, strength nine, AP minus three, and D6 damage. It's much, much better. So I would go less cannons over missile launchers for sure. Um, if you're going to go for anti infantry just and cheapness, take heavy bolters or mortars. Mortars, not bad. You can get a cheap little squad for a 10 man squad with a mortar for 45 points. <laughs> Absolute bargain. <laughs> very, very cheap. Indeed. So that's your heavy weapons options available for them. Disadvantage is the low ballistic skill. Big advantage is the ability to protect that model. So you've got a last cannon, you've got eight guys to protect him, to absorb the damage until the opponent can get to that last cannon. So that's uh, a big bonus for the regular infantry squads. One other guardsman may replace his last gun with items from special weapons. Uh, so. Special Weapons is a Sniper Rifle. Again, all these are at 40 here, which is a shame. Uh, well, just to bear that in mind. Uh, so, uh, it's over here. Sniper Rifle, Strength 4. There's no minus on the AP, it's range 36. One damage. If you get a 6, it's a mortal wound. You can target characters. I, I think regular Sniper Rifle is just weak now. I wouldn't bother with it. Duh, but it's 2 points. So, it's very very cheap to take though so you may as well just take it um, if you don't choose something else the other special weapons is a flamer which I think will be worth it a little bit of protection on overwatch a little bit of help on the assault it's going to be a d6 shot strength 4 yeah and auto hits on the target and just seven points for that one. It's gone up a bit, it used to be five. So there's that one. Uh, the grenade launcher. Five points. Which isn't bad actually. So grenade launcher is five. Range 24, assault d6. Uh, strength three. Uh, zero and, and one damage. Crack grenade though is strength six minus one and d3 damage. Yeah, grenade launcher is good. So that's another option. Yep, no, it's definitely considered taking grenade launchers. And then you can go for melter gun, plasma gun, usuals for them, and they will cost. Um, melter gun is 12. Plasma gun uh, is. Uh, yeah. Oh, model. Oh, it's interesting how they price this. Plasma gun for a model with ballistic skill 4 plus is 7. Plasma gun other models is 13. Wow, so it's very cheap to take it now for regular guardsmen. So I guess it depends what you want your squads to do. But there's, there's so many options to go for. Burying a last cannon there, I think it's a good idea. Uh, mortars, I like the idea of mortars. If you want just cheap infantry units, the opponent's probably just going to ignore. Uh, D6 shots a turn. Straight strength four. And you can target whoever you want, you can split fire with it, you can you can have like four squads and each of their mortars can triangulate and target the same unit. You will cause damage of them. Uh, so yeah, no mortars. Which I love I love the look of the mortars, they just look great. One of the best poses uh, for the caddians, just for the guys putting the, the mortar rounds in and so on. They just look really good. 
so mortar is definitely a consideration there as well. Uh, if you're going to go anti-tank, I just take the last cannon and then just protect it with just regular guards and just to keep the cost down. That's going to cost you 40 points and 20 to 60 points for your last cannon nest. Uh, if you're going to go for anti-infantry, at long range I would take the mortar, even over the heavy bolter. There, I never thought I'd say, <laughs> never thought I'd come to the day where I say that, but these six shots is just not bad. Not bad. Uh, so that's infantry squads then. Uh, conscripts, power level three for infantry squad, power level three as well. For the conscripts, just you get 20 of them. Wow, straight up. You could take another 10. So you can take units of 30 of them. Nice. Their weapon skill and ballistic skill drops to five plus. Their leadership becomes four. <laughs> Would you believe? Oh dear. Um, and a conscript costs. Three points. So, 60 points for unit 20. Raw recruits. Roll a d6 each time an officer uses the voice of command to this unit. Four plus, the order applies, otherwise, the order has no effect. <laughs> so, the orders they don't quite understand. The order's a great job. And uh, I, I love seeing conscripts in the army. It's great when James uh, puts those in. It's great to bulk out a force. A Brilliant uh, human meat shield to screen your army. Just get a big unit of 30 conscripts and just surround your force. Very, very cheap and effective meat shield to use. There's definitely a use for them tactically uh, in games, for sure. And even their massed firepower or mass attacks in combat can be uh, can cause trouble. Uh, have a commissar nearby, um, some other units like priests and so on to give them some benefits, and all of a sudden the weight of numbers can be amplified uh, with some bonuses. And if the commas are nearby from Real, just keeping them in there, keeping them going, so they won't melt away. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're taking conscripts, you've got to have commissars nearby. Like, if you lose 20 casualties, you're only going to lose one model from Real, um, instead of just completely melting away with that. So, that's helpful. Tempest of Science, covering the codex. Uh, Master of Ordnance sends power level 2. And he's 30 points. He's under a last pistol and artillery barrage. Uh, just the usual stat line. Ballistic skill is free plus. Just two attacks for him, three wounds. So artillery barrage, range 100, heavy d6, strength 8, minus 2, and d3. Damage. It's like a battle cannon with a longer range. This weapon can only be fired once per battle and cannot be used if the bearer moves. This weapon cannot target units that are not visible to the bearer. Uh, can target units, so you can target a unit you can't see, but it's minus one to hit. You may only use one artillery barrage per turn, regardless of how many Master of Ordnance you have in your army. So you only use the one, one shot only for him. Uh, Master of Ballistics, you can reroll any hit rolls of one for friendly, basilisks, wyverns, manticores, death strikes when they target enemy units over 36 inches away in the shooting phase. If they're in six inches of this model. Enemy units over 36, that's a long distance. God, that really eliminates half the battlefield or more. Um, and it's only one shot only with the, with the artillery barrage. Mm. It'd only really take him if you were heavy on that artillery, but even then it's only effective over that range. So probably, yeah, it's a shame that. Strange they put that limitation in. That restriction, you'll probably be put off by that. So you can go for a platoon commander, a cheaper HQ, nope, he's elite. Yeah, platoon commander's elite. His stat line's not bad though. Weapon skill, blister skill, free up, uh, free plus, three wounds, free attacks, it's not bad. Uh, he's two power level. Uh, he's 20 points, he's 10 points cheaper. Um, he's got voice of command. And that's it, it's just one order, so you just, it's not worth taking platoon commanders, I don't think. No, I just, I just go company commanders. I think that's what a lot of guard players are saying, is just you may as well just take the two orders with the company commander, so I probably wouldn't bother with the platoon command. And strange how that, but depend, they structured it so that he is uh, an elite. So uh, if you are struggling 
four slots in a, an organization of your army and you've got some spare elite slots then you could fill that out with platoon commanders but ideally I think the company commander is much better uh, then you've got the command squad here which is separate now from those uh, models the way 8th edition works six points a time you're paying a bit more but you are getting that extra ballistic skill free up with these that's four veterans armed with less guns and frag grenades uh, they then have any veteran may place his less gun with less pistol you may take a chain sword uh, one of them may take a vox caster one other veteran may place their less gun with a heavy flamer one other veteran may take a regimental standard which we'll take a look at here it's five points a regimental standard all friendly regiment units add one to the leadership whilst they're in six maybe yeah, it helps a bit for five points. Yeah, plus one leadership. If you've got loads of units stacked up, it's worth taking just for five points. Yeah. Yep, no, it's worth doing. Doesn't sound much, but for five points, if you're packed in tight, it's worth doing. Uh, one other veteran may take a medipack. And that is ten points. The end of your movement phase is a model with medipack can attempt to heal a single model. Select a friendly astro military time infantry unit within three inches or all d6. Or on a four plus one model in the unit recovers a wound lost in the battle. Um, if it's if the unit has a wound's characteristic of one, one model slain earlier in the battle can be returned. The unit can only be the target of this ability once each turn. So yeah, helpful enough. Yeah. I don't know. If it was D3 wounds restored, that would be good. If it was only A wound, maybe, maybe a waste of points. Regimental standard, all friendly. I oh, covered that. Uh, Voxcast, we've covered that as well. So, uh, two other veterans from a, uh, may form a heavy weapons team. That may well be worth it to get the 3 plus ballistic skill. Stick a Lascan in there. Any other veteran replaces their Lascan with a special weapons. Again, gain access to that. And that is to uh, power level two. Next is uh, Color Sergeant Kel, power level three. It's 50 points. Um, he's got four wounds. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, three up, three attacks, four up, save. He's got power fist and power sword that's all built into the cost. It's a pretty good deal. We know the rules for them. Colours of the Cadian 8. Friendly Cadian units within 6 may reroll failed morale tests. Right, so it's pretty helpful for morale. Listen up, maggots. You can make an additional order with any single friendly Cadian officer within 6. Sergeant Cal in each of your turns. And then Swarm Protector or D6 each time Castellan Creed loses a wound whilst within 3 inches of Cal. On 2 plus, Creed doesn't take the wound, Cal does instead. Alright, so there's that Swarm Protector roll. Yeah, he's okay. He's cheap enough yep okay next then is a uh, special weapons team uh, this unit contains six guardsmen each model is armed with laser gun and frag grenades usual stat line is four plus for ballistic skill for these guys um, and three models may replace their laser gun with an item from the special weapons list so yeah, like free flamers is cool and cheap enough. Be a cheap little unit. Stick them inside a Chimera if you're an assault based army or inside a Valkyrie. Because the flamers are not affected by ballistic skill. This is the great thing. So even though they're quite poor, you know, 4 plus, the flame is unaffected. It's auto hits. So I'd, I'd go for triple flamer. Yep, yeah, triple flamer. And not really the others, the grenade launcher, melts gun, plasma gun. You could do, but the ballistic skill is an issue uh, for them. But cheap plasma you can take 7 points a time. 21 points to give them free plasma guns, yeah. May well be an option. Alright, so then uh, that's power level 2. Uh, veterans next then, uh, with power level 5 for a unit of 10. And you can't expand them out, they have to stay at a unit of 10. Frag grenades, and no crack grenades for them, okay. 
The only bonus for these is their ballistic skill goes up to 3 plus. So the configurations then, any veteran may replace their LAS gun with a shotgun or an auto gun. Okay, uh, auto gun's virtually the same as the LAS gun. It is identical. One veteran may take a Vox caster. Uh, one other veteran may replace their LAS gun with a heavy flamer. Okay, two other veterans may form a heavy weapons team. That might be an option. Up to three veterans. This is where I give them the, the more expensive gear, like the melter guns, uh, plasma guns, just to take advantage of that free plus that does help out. Yep, yeah. and they're better protected because you've got unit 10 models to absorb the wounds. Sergeant may take melee weapons, I wouldn't bother, and uh, he can take ranged weapons. I wouldn't bother with melee weapons because it's just two attacks and you're wasting your points uh, just there. So, yeah, if I take veteran squads as opposed to special weapons. I'd go uh, vet squads and then kit them out with plasma melter. I'd probably go melter. But again, it depends what you want to do. If you're going to go assault based, then yeah, be a cheap enough squad. Because you're looking at veterans. Six points on what was So 60 points for the unit, plus your weapons on top. So you're looking at about 100 points. There. For them. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's for veterans then. Just there. Right, so uh, that's power level 5, I think I've already mentioned that. Power level 3 is Sergeant Harker. And uh, he is 50 points for him. Does come with 4 attacks, he's strength 4. He is 3 plus for his weapon skill and ballistic skill. Um, he's armed with payback, which is range 36, assault 3, strength 5, over minus 2 and 1 damage. This is like a special heavy bolter. Any bonus for his bit more on the minus on the AP. Harker's Hellraisers, you can reroll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for any Katakan units within six of him. Katakan units, not just infantry, it's units. So yeah, put him in the heart of your force, rerolling ones. Helpful enough. So I'd take him and the model's great. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you want to see Katakans in action, check out the battle reports. Uh, for Challenger Scorpion of Laurie Turner, it's got a, a beautiful Katakan army. He's painted up these characters and they, they do look fantastic. Very, very nice paint job indeed. Uh, so you can see a nice display of them. And he uses Harker there, and I'm sure he'll be happy enough with the rules for uh, him there. Yeah, no, he's decent enough. Uh, command Squad for the Tempestus, we'll leave that one. Uh, Ministorium Priest. This next is power level 2. Uh, he is 35 points. And you're not going to have to pay out there. He's armed with crack grenades actually. Fragging crack grenades and last pistol. He's got 4 wounds. The priest is pretty durable. 6 up save, 3 attacks. 4 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. You can take an auto gun and you can take a chainsaw. Zealot, you can reroll out hit rolls. For this unit, in a turn in which it charged, made a heroic intervention or was charged by an enemy unit. So that's just him. He's got a 4 plus in one save. Alright, so this is the reason why you're taking war hymns. You can add one to the attacks characteristic of all models uh, in Adeptus Ministorium Infantry and Astra Militarum Infantry units within 6 of the Priest. So plus 1 attack. So for example, have him in with unit conscripts. If 30 attacks becomes 60 attacks, just because of him. That's the kind of bonuses that really help out. Or helping out Borgrins, for example, with their attacks, and giving them an extra attack, really helping out as well. So yeah, priests definitely have their place as well. Crusaders are in here, interesting. 11 points each. Ah, right. Now, 
Yeah, 11 points, then you've got to pay for the power sword, 4 points, you have 15 points a time. They've got 4 up to save, they do have 2 attacks, they are 3 plus for weapon skill. Um, yeah, I'm doing power swords. Yeah, 4 up to save. Acts of faith, roll d6 at the start of each of your turns, or 2 plus, 1 unit from your army with this ability can perform an act of faith chosen from the following list. So 1 unit per army, so you probably only want to take 1 of these units. I would imagine. Hand of the Emperor, the unit can immediately move as if it was the movement phase. Oh, you choose, okay. Divine Guidance, the unit can immediately shoot as if it was the shooting phase. The Passion, the unit can, if it was an inch of an enemy unit, immediately pile in the attack as if it were the fight phase, that's cool. Spirit of the Martyr, one model in the unit recovers D3 lost wounds, or you can return a single slay model to the unit with one wound remaining. Yep, cool. Uh, unit contains two Crusaders, you can take an additional two, or up to four, or up to six, or up to eight. Okay, so give a unit a ten. Shield of Faith. Models in this unit have a six plus invun. In addition, this unit can attempt to deny one psychic power in each psychic phase, in the same manner as a psyker, but if it does so, instead of rolling two d6, only roll a single d6. Psychic power is resisted if the roll is greater than the result of the psychic test that manifested the power. Oh, it's difficult. When attempting to deny a psychic power, first select the model in the unit, measure range, visibility, and so on from this model. Zealot, you can re-roll failed hit rolls for a unit with this ability in the turn in which you're charged. Made a rogue intervention was charged. Reroll hits, nice. Storm shield, models in this unit have a 3 plus in one. Right, it's not up here, so I'm guessing the, the storm shield is included in the cost of the model, which all of a sudden makes Crusaders great. Yeah. So then, and this is the, the fluffy side of things here, I'd have a unit of Crusaders with a Commissar nearby <laughs> and a Priest. And have them work together and all of a sudden you've got a nasty close combat unit. Yep. You know, you've got 30 attacks at Priest to hit. With the Priest nearby, re-rolling your hits. Wow. You're gonna get like 25 hits. And remember it's power swords. So you're at minus three, <laughs> minus three on the opponent's save. So Crusaders are great. Yep, no, they are good. They are very good. They may work out 15 points, what that's 150 points. And it's a very, very nasty unit. So no, they're fine. Uh, Tech Priest Engine Seer. 30 points. He's armed with the Omnicyan X. Which uh, is zero, so that's absorbed in the points uh, value. Last pistol and then uh, servo arm as well. So that's 12 points for that. You'd have to add that on top. Servo arm, I'm not kidding this, it's times two strength, so here's strength eight. AP minus two and three damage. That sounds good, but it's minus one to hit and it's only one attack. So, one attack at five plus. Oh, it is dreadful. You couldn't expect much. And then you're sort of wasting your points because you're having to pay up for a servo arm and you've got the Omniscient X anyway, which is plus one strength, AP minus two and two damage. It's kind of a, a, a waste that, which is a shame. Um, Yeah, well, no, I think you can go for, for example, two attacks. Uh, you could do one attack with the axe, one attack with the arm. You could do it that way. So semi not wasted. Yeah, he's got six plus in uh, He's got four wounds, by the way, two attacks, three up save. Strength up is four. Four up weapon skill and ballistic skills. Cheap enough. Master of Machines. It's only one wound being restored, though. It really is. Uh, no, if the model being repaired is a... Forge World Astro Time model, it regains D3 wounds. If it's a quest of Mechanicus model, it's one wound. No, so he does get the D3 restore. So, no, helpful enough. Yep. No, I, I think it's worth taking. It's a selection of vehicles, have him in the middle, and then uh, he can repair those vehicles uh, as the game goes along. So, no, that's fine. Uh, so he's an elite choice character, uh, power level 2, power level 3 is a servitor, 
What's unit of servo tools? You get four of them. Round of servo arms. So that's 12 points, and then the servo tool himself is two points. Right, 14 points each. You can, up to two of them can take heavy bolter, plasma cannon, or multi melters. Um, but their ballistic skills are five plus. Also, in six, the tech priest does go up to four plus, but still, probably wouldn't bother with them. Probably just have a tech priest just by himself running around helping vehicles, I think would be the best option. Right, so then uh, more elites here, plenty of elites. Regular uh, Commissar is just 30 points. Help them out, it's great. Weapon skill, three plus, there's three wounds, there's three attacks there, decent enough stat line. You give them a power sword, 34 points, so, so cheap, and you've got your, uh, your, uh, your aura of discipline and summary execution just there. Yeah, I mean, if you, the Lord Commissar, if you need to fill out an HQ, then do that. Yes, because he is an HQ. You need a cheap HQ somewhere, you can take Lord Commissar. But other than that, be happy enough just to take a regular Commissar here. And it's for the aura abilities, you keep the cost right down, and, and then just take advantage of them. Officer of the Fleet is power level 2. Free up ballistic skill, just pointing out a few bits here, he does have three wounds, two attacks. So he's armed with uh, a Lance Pistol. But he's got air raid requested. Once per battle in your shooting phase, you can pick an enemy unit other than a character that is visible to this model anywhere on the battlefield. Roll a d6, and roll of a 1 to a 3, nothing happens. This is once per battle. It is. <gasps> this is half a chance of it going off. On a 4 to 5, the target unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, the unit suffers 3 mortal wounds. We only call on one air raid per turn, regardless of the number of officers. That's it. Strafing coordinates. At the start of each shooting phase, pick an enemy unit, other than one which can fly, in 18 of this model. The duration of the phase you can reroll, hit rolls of one for any friendly air and autocrine imperialis units that can fly. The target, the unit you picked. Hmm. Wouldn't bother with that one. 25 points. Shame it's only once but that's all but that's that one. Uh, weird vein psychers, only one wound each. Five plus weapon skill, ballistic skill four plus. They're armed with the wide vein stave, which is just plus one strength, and that's it. Nothing else there at all. The power level one. Uh, you have three of them to start off with, you can take another three of them, or up to six of them. See if you have to pay for the weird vein stave. Nope, it's zero. And then the psychers themselves themselves are eight points each. Choir of Minds. Each time you take a psychic test, or deny the witch test for this unit, roll one d6 instead of two. You add one to psychic tests you make for this unit that has three or more models. Or two to test if it has six or more models. Okay. When manifesting a psychic power, select first select one on the unit, measure range, visibility, and so on. Uh, all right, that's the same rules as earlier on. For the primary psychic. Okay. So that's them. Again, we'll check out to see if the psychic powers are worth taking or not uh, a bit later. Uh, Astropath, power level one. He's fifteen points. Very very cheap. Telepathic, telepathic a stave. Do you have to pay for that? Six points. Um, but that is plus one strength and d3 damage. Three wounds for him. Weapon skill five plus, ballistic skill six plus. But the stats have, have dropped right down. Um, you get a very cheap psycho. Uh, astral divination. The start of each of your shooting phase is. The start of your shooting phase, pick a friendly unit, an enemy unit within 18. The duration of the phase the unit you picked gains no bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. They're targeted by uh, Astromeda Time units within six of the model. Telepathic Assault. Each time you take a psychic test, attempts to manifest smite for a 1d6 instead of 2. 
Oh, so it's a five or a six to get that one going. The model can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one. It's cheap, but it's... You get what you pay for, really. You know, it's, <laughs> it's very, very minimal. He's even going to struggle with smite, so... Mm, whatever that's worth doing. Or not. Right, now here is uh, Ogryn Bodyguard. An Ogryn Bodyguard. Cool. This is really good. So you can take a lone model here and you can just be like a, a hired brute just to protect um, your models. Now, yeah, and I can imagine having a little medic nearby just patching him up as he takes the damage, but uh, he is an elite. Yeah, look at this, he's a character as well. It's a nice, so you can, he's hard to, to pick off here. Movement 6, weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 5, toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks. Fantastic stat line. See if he's worth points. It's 55 points, it's still not bad for a great stat line. Model, uh, he's armed with a uh, ripper gun, a huge knife and frag bombs. The huge knife is AP minus 1 and 2 damage. Ouch. And the ripper gun in melee with the, like the bayonet that sticks out is minus one in combat from shooting at strength five no damage no AP one damage assault three range twelve um, let's see if you have to add points to that so uh, is zero and then the huge knife is zero as well so straight fifty five points one way places ripper gun with a grenadier gauntlet or ball grin maul so may as well cover these now when we get to Ogrins and Ogrins just over here. Um, so, Grenadier Gauntlet then. Assault D6, strength 4, AP 0, and then 1 damage. Pretty tame. 10 points, no way. Wouldn't bother with that. Stay with the Ripper Gun. Definitely stay with the Ripper Gun. Dear me. Um, and then the Bulgrin Maul is plus 2 strength. So he fights a strength 7, so he's on 4s to wound vehicles, AP minus 1 and 2 damage. 7 points, no, well worth taking. So I take the ball grim more. He replaces huge knife with a slab shield or brute shield. Slab shield's 0. Brute shield is 0, wow. Brute shield. Is a four plus invun, and the uh, slab shield is add two twenty save rolls for model equipped with a slab shield. So, yep, right. So that you can then take Borgrin plate, so you can upgrade his armor. Oh yeah, here it is, five points extra, you have to pay for that. But he then gets a four up save, if you combine that with a slab shield. Add two makes you a two up save. Right, two up save, wow. A great big fan of these now. Carp against Borgrins. And they're, uh, they are definitely are good. Six wounds is incredible. So Avalanche of Muscle, you have one to the attacks characteristics of this model in the fight phase and the turn in which made a successful charge. So imagine that with a priest, you've got four attacks plus one plus one with the priest. So you're on like six attacks. Ridiculous. And they're at freeze to hit. Wow, strength seven. Cover that, cover that. Bodyguard. Roll d6 each time a friendly Astrum Time character loses a wound whilst they're within three inches of this model. On a free, a free plus, the Astrum Time character does not lose a wound. This model suffers a mortal wound. In addition, this model may not be selected as your warlord, may not be given a warlord trait. So yeah, they do have rules there for actually being a bodyguard as well. So the Ogryn bodyguard uh, is a great idea, I think. Yeah, no, just looking over across the stats here, three wounds for a Borgrin, he's got six. Fantastic. Yeah, so there's a lot. Great model, that one, great idea. 
Okay, so uh, regular Ogrins is next. The 30 points of time. Five up save. And they're under Ripper Guns. And Frag Bombs. Frag Bomb. Strength, uh, range 6, Grenade D6. Strength 4. Nice. Yeah, well, we know the rules. We've seen the rules already for Ripper Guns. I wouldn't rate them that much, I don't think. No, no. Nope. Stick unit for them. Or up to six of them. One, sorry, one Ogryn Bonehead and two Ogryns. Plus six, you get up to units of nine. Avalanche of Muscle rules for them. So that's, we've covered the rules really. Uh, Borgrins then. So 30 points, uh, but Borgrins are 35, so you're paying a bit more, but you are getting that four plus save. You then take the uh, Slab Shield, which is what I would go for, um, to give you the extra bonus for that. Yeah, equipped to slab shields, fantastic, two up so 35 points a time. Place the gauntlet with a maul, I would, yep. They're looking at about 41 points, I think. 41, 42 points. Yeah, seven points, 42 points. Very, very good. Fantastic, no, very, very good, so do, do rate those. It's about time Guard had something that can fight back well in close combat. Borgrins are a uh, brilliant stat line, very well protected with the slab shields especially. Uh, and then they can fight back hard with those mauls. Strength 7, minus 1 and 2 damage. Really, really good. So no, I would take Borgrins for sure if I was trying to think of a unit to protect my vehicles or infantry and so on. I'd probably go for units of 3, so it's no big deal if a unit dies, a couple of units of three of them, sure will work. Very good. So we've got Nork, uh, Dead Dog next. He's 80 points. Um, but for that you're getting Strength Toughest 5, 6 wounds again. Uh, there, similar to the Bodyguard, 4 attacks. Ripper Gun, Huge Knife, Frag Bombs. He also can deliver a Thunderous Headbutt. Um, so a thunderous headbutt is plus three strength, so it's strength eight, minus two, and d3 damage. Only one headbutt a turn. <laughs> Sorry, okay. So avalanche of muscle, seeing that heroic sacrifice. If not dead dog is slain in the fight phase, you can immediately fight with him before removing him as a casualty, even if he's already fought. Okay. So he'll fight no matter what. Uh, then loyal to the end, or at six each time friendly Astra Militarum character loses a wound whilst you've been three inches of dead dog on a two plus. Uh, the character does not lose a wound, but dead dog suffers a mortal wound. In addition, dead dog may not be selected as your warlord may not be given a warlord trait. Yeah, it sounds okay. I mean, it sort of pays for two regular Borgrins though for that points cost. So, yeah, it would. So, probably wouldn't go for him. I don't think. Just go for regular, regular ball grins, I think. Yeah. Right, so Rattlings. Uh, power level 4 for him, by the way. Power level 2 for Rattlings. Um, it's 2 points for the sniper rifle. And then uh, five, <laughs> 5 points each. They're very, very cheap. Take up, to, uh, they come using it 5, you can take up to 10 of them. Very, very cheap. Sniper rifle's heavy one. I know the rules for that. Find the best spot. Instead of deploying, uh, this unit may wait until both armies are fully deployed and then be placed, as long as they're more than 18 inches away from any models. Shoot and scarper immediately after making a shooting attack other than firing overwatch. This unit can move as if it was the movement phase, but it cannot advance. So the movement five. So you could fire them, then hide them, tuck them behind something, be completely out of sight. A very good way to use them. Emerge. Um, yeah, emerge the next time round. Maybe you're at minus one because you're firing heavy weapons, but then fire again and then disappear. Yep, now that is cool. Naturally stealthy, they get plus two for their so to their saving throw when they're in cover. Yep, and I take a unit of ten. Very very cheap, and then just make use of that shoot and scarper. Find a nice. You sort of choose your spot on the battlefield, find a nice, which is what a sniper would do. Choose the best spot, good field of fire, and a little place where you can fire, and then move away. Return, fire again. And they're very small 
model, so <laughs> like a firing step would be good, where they fire and then just go down the step and then disappear and come up again. <laughs> would work. Would work really good. Or you go little units of five, so insignificant your opponent just ignores them and they just pick away. And e easier to hide them somewhere as well. Trying to get a whole unit of ten to go five inches and hide somewhere is a bit more difficult. So little units of five might work better for them. So, uh, vehicles now, Hellhounds then, we're on f uh, fast attack. We've finished elites, we're on to fast attack now. Um, 73 points to start off with. What drops is your movement, goes from 12 down to 8 down to 4. Some hefty drop that. Ballistic skill 4 plus, 5 plus, and 6 plus. But if you're armed with a flamer type weapon, it's not going to make any difference. Uh, your attacks as well, but it's insignificant. Strength, is strength 6, tough to 7, 11 wounds, 3 up save. So, uh, unit interest in here, because you can go for one of them a Hellhound, Devil Dog, or Bane Wolf. But you can take another one, or another one. So, uh, and you can take Devil Dogs, Bane Wolves, any combination. Cool. Uh, the power level six. So, I wonder which would work best here. Let's see the rules for these. So, Chem Cannon first of all is range eight, heavy D six. Strength, it's always twos to wound, unless it's a vehicle, in which case it's six. So the chem cannon's cut out to take on infantry. It's AP minus three. It's D6 shots. It really is quite poor. Yeah, it really is quite, cool. uh, quite poor. And then it's 15 points. It's a very cheap vehicle. We've just had 15 points, but it's not going to do much. You have to set the heavy bolter as well. Eight points as well to add on top of that. So you're starting to get close to it. 90 points there. Uh, each Hellhound is armed with uh, the Inferno Cannon. Range 16, that's pretty good. Heavy 2d6, wow. Really good, heavy 2d6. These are auto hits. Strength six, minus one, this is good. It's auto hits on the target, fantastic. A nice range on the weapon. If that was d6, I'd say no, but heavy 2d6, very, very, very good. How much is it? Is the key. 20 points for an extra 5 points. No, Inferno Cannon. Any day of the week. That really is a really good weapon. 20 points. Really, really good. So that is a massive bonus. Hellhounds, I take them. The weapon's brilliant. And the, 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 what makes these even more greater is on the assault you're moving up your opponent comes in to try and take on your tank he's going to get hit by a wall of 2d6 auto hits on overwatch very very good okay the bane wolf is equipped to heavy bolt and a chem cannon i covered that one and then the devil dog is the one with the melter cannon melter cannon assault d3 so no minus when you move with that one which is very good Range 24, strength 8, minus 4, d6 damage. If you get within 12, it's um, 2d6, choose the best. Or drop the worst, whichever way around. Melter cannon. Um, melter cannon. 20 points. Yeah, a bit of nasty anti tank there. Any downside is your ballistic skill 4 plus. How many times you just miss? But you'll never miss with the <laughs> you'll never miss with the Inferno Cannon. Really rate that. Very good. Now if I was doing a list, I'd take a couple of Hellhounds. Cheap. Very cheap. Yeah, and take the Inferno Cannon. Two of them working together, saturating targets with four D6 auto hits. God. Use your rules for explodes, you can take uh, the equipment list. For example, the tracks just to keep them running. At full speed. Smoke launchers are available and vehicle squadron you can split up. Yep. Great. No, hellhounds. I'll take the regular hellhounds while I go for. I would choose. Uh, scout sentinels then. Power level three. Power level six by the way for the hellhounds. And so scout sentinels. 35 points a time. 
cheap enough. Six wounds, the opponent to get through, four up save, strength five, toughness four. Only one attacks, don't expect much in combat. They are four plus for their weapon and ballistic skill movement, nine. So you've got access to the multi laser here. It's just ten points. There's no minus here, it's heavy free. So if you move, there's that. It's range 36, strength 6, no minus and 1 damage. I wouldn't really rate that very much at all. You can take one of them and go up to another 2. It's multi laser. Any model may replace its multi laser with heavy flamer. That might be a good idea. Yep. Yeah. Auto cannon, missile launcher, laser cannon. Yeah, maybe go heavy flamers. With them. It's hard to know. Add any model may take a sentinel chainsaw. Uh, it's minus one in combat. That's it. What a, what a total waste of time. Um, if this is over one point, it's really not worth it. Um, I'm not sure where it is here. Um, melee weapons, sentinel chainsaw. Not where that. Not sure where that is. Probably not. Here it is, Sentinel Chainsaw. Two points. Oh, I wouldn't bother with that at all. That's a total waste. You're only on one attack. Yep, okay. Anyone may take a Hunter Killer? Wow. I would take that. Yep. Yeah, and what's cool about this is you, you could go like a, a combo of like heavy flamer, so you can go out burning stuff out. If you're overwatched, you've got that cover, and then take the um, anti killer and stick that on. You've got a little bit of anti tank long range ability there as well. And the fact is that these are probably going to die quite quick if you're going to use them as scouts. So you let that missile shot off early, and then that's done its job. And then it's a bonus after that. Smoke launchers are available for these, and it's a scout vehicle. So. Uh, start the first battle round, but before the turn begins, you can move this unit up to nine inches. Cannot end its move more than nine inches. Cannot end its move within nine inches of any enemy models. So, but tactically, these are great for stopping deep strikers from coming down. Spread them out in front of your force. Brilliant screen for like area denial, and then distracting target your opponent's got to try and deal with them. Um, just wasting his time. Yep. So, Scout Sentinels are great. No, cheap enough. I wouldn't give them the heaviest of war gear, like LAS cannons and, and missile launchers. I don't think so. No. But I wouldn't waste them. I'd, I wouldn't bother with multi lasers. Go maybe Heavy Flame and Hunter Killer, I reckon, is the combo that I would go for. But use them in different ways. If you want to anchor them at the back and stick LAS cannons on them, then. That's fine as well. Armoured Sentinels then, power level 3 for these. Uh, they just get a free up save, which is very, very good. The movement drops to 8, but it's worth doing 40 points, you're paying a little bit more. And you just equip them the same way. Yep, same options, same results, abilities just there. So that's Armoured Sentinels. Yeah, okay. Uh, heavy weapons teams will be cheap enough. Uh, six points. You have to take three of them, and then you can equip them with heavy weapons. Yep, fine. So definitely an option there. You can have little mortar squads. Exceptionally cheap. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Power level 3 for these, by the way. Heavy weapon squad. Can't believe how cheap these are. 6 points. Right, it's 18 points. And then you've got... Uh, let's have a look here, mortars. 5 points a time. Right, 5 points. So, um, for 33 points. A squad. No, that's 3d6 shots a time uh, with the mortars, you know, three of them firing, any target you want. Yeah, I'd take three, three lots of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and just chuck out 9d6 shots and hose down anything. Anything, anything. And then because it's strength four, and this is a little thing I want to point out, it's strength four, which means that most vehicles you will be wounding on fives. 
So you plaster the opponent with tons and tons of hits. You can get a load of wounds and force some saves as you start grinding vehicles down. And this, you know, if you lose them, you've lost nothing. You know, you, so cheap in points cost. So uh, I rate mortars. I really do. And, and ranks of them. So like, why not take six units of three? <laughs> just chuck out heaps of shots and just bedazzle your opponent with firepower. And target anyway, there's nowhere to hide. In fact, great for dealing with hordes, flushing uh, targets down, grinding units down, forcing loads of saves. Your opponent's got a brilliant unit of terminators. They just get pummeled by tons and tons of mortars. And very quick to resolve now, it's just D6 shots every time. It's not like individual templates, which used to drive me mad. If uh, James placing, t you know, rolling to scatter each one, but now it's just 3D6 shots. You can work through them really quick. Uh, and then just amass a ton of hits coming through. So very, very, very good indeed. Heavy weapons teams, mortars. I'm not expecting them to uh, work wonders, but for cheap unit that can just grind anything down, absolutely brilliant. So mortars all the way. Why not take nine squads of three? <laughs> just really go for it. 18 D6 shots. Yep. It looked incredible. Now there's something else. There's something else with these is that you can target units you can't see, which I, I'm just I was just thinking you can set them up and then you can see something across that you can't see from their line of sight. But you can just hide these out of line of sight of everybody. So you put them inside a bunker and they disappear for the entire game and they just chuck out shots and the opponent can't even see them. Yep, brilliant. So, um, it's a strange, didn't think I'd end up going on about mortars here in this review, but uh, by all means, the units I've covered so far on combinations, ones perhaps that I haven't seen, leave it in the comments section below uh, for other guard players to see, uh, but if you've had good experience with mortars, and you rate them, I'm sure there's some players out there that will really, uh, really do like using them, or you've come up against a player that's used loads of mortars, then leave that in the comments section. Um, be interesting to read that and uh, I'll see the comments and then other uh, viewers can scroll down there uh, and then if you're watching this you're looking for more tips scroll down the comment section um, and this is where you can see comments from experienced guard players and they'll let you know some great combinations to go for uh, as well and by all means share your experience uh, in the comments section below um, so that's them basilisks then James is working on these uh, he should have had them a long time ago uh, but great looking model uh, usual stat line, usual damage results. So uh, it's 100 points for Basilisk. The Earth Shaker Cannon is zero, which you can see. Wow. You have to take a 108 points. Exceptionally cheap artillery here. Range 240 inches. Fantastic. Heavy D6, strength 9, and minus 3, D3. Well, two dice the number of attacks and firing this weapon discard the lowest. Brilliant. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. To the bearer, fantastic. Basilisk, brilliant. Really, really good. That eliminates that dreaded one. It's very, very good roll number one. So you're going to be expecting to get at least three or four shots. And it increases your chance of getting those six shots. So Earthshaker can, fantastic. Strength 90, we wounded most vehicles. Minus three is a hefty chunk to knock off, so. Yep. Battery three of them, which you can do in one choice. This is heavy supporter on here. Uh, yeah, you can take an additional two of them. Wow, Basilisks are great. You can take a heavy flame if you wish. Probably wouldn't bother. And you can take items from the vehicle equipment and maybe stick a hunter killer on them. Fire it off at a different target. You're probably going to sit still with this, um, so that will suit the hunter killer there. Vehicle Squadron explodes, smoke launchers all available for the Basilisks. Fantastic unit. And you know, visually, they look great as well. Very, very nice. So yeah, excellent stuff. What I would mention about these, uh, mortars are mortar <laughs> mortars talk about mortars again. Mortars are a great option because heavy weapons teams are vulnerable. They get I, I pick on them and blow them away. Uh, because they've got no bodyguard models around to protect them. Um, so the great idea with mortars is they can hide, that will protect them, and if you do lose them, you've lost a cheap 
uh, weapon. If you take las cannons and you lose them, you've lost 60 points, uh, and they can disappear very, very quickly. And, and then again, if you have got las cannons, your opponent sees that and will go for them anyway. So I'd recommend mortars <laughs> for those. So uh, there, that's the mortar uh, speech finished. So uh, Wyvern's here then, armed with squad shard, storm shard, mortars. <laughs> Yeah, as well. So, <laughs> model does look really good. Uh, so, Wyvern here is 85 points for him, and then the squad squad is quad storm shard mortar is here. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, that's the Y event. Oh, okay, so it's there. Zero. Okay, she's not going to pay out for that. Does come with heavy bolter? Yes. So it's about 980, 93 points, something like that. Okay, usual. Yep, yeah, usual uh, details here. So, the mortar is range 48, heavy 4d6. Wow. Strength 4. Zero AP minus um, one damage, but it can fire at targets you can't see. Yep, so again, you could hide the whole vehicle behind something. You can reroll failed hit roll, you can reroll failed wounds for this weapon. Brilliant. Really, really good. Yep. So, very, very nice indeed. A, t a tough way of taking mortals. Uh, yeah, well, here you go. How about this? Take uh, one of them. Or two of them, and then have some mortars, mortars next to them. <laughs> For cheap. Very, very cheap. Cheap volume of firepower. So if you're up against elite army, and you know you can't match their elites with your own elites, which guards still can't do, then you beat them by overwhelming them with cheap firepower. Uh, it frustrates the opponent, but it's effective. Uh, that is an effective unit for doing it. And again, um, again, uh, mortars the same, do the same kind of thing. And the ability to fire at any point, anywhere, anyone, no matter where they are, um, is just a fantastic ability. So this here and, and uh, the unit I mentioned before, well worth taking. Very, very strong. Um, for example, you might not be able to reach the opponent's deployment zone and his objective, but anything that's on it, you can just pound them. Pound it, pound it, pound it. Grind the opponents down. Even if he's got two up save, he's just going to keep rolling ones. Eventually, you're just going to grind them down. And because of the range, and your targets are hidden, you can just pick whoever you want and just blow them away. Excellent. Uh, usual rules here. Yeah, I would still maybe stick a hunter killer missile on top of him. For sure, pretty much every vehicle I'd have for the guard, I'd stick a hunter killer missile on there. And you're just really ramping up your anti-tank ability uh, by taking them. Usual rules there as well. Uh, Hydra next. James uh, getting these sorted out for his force as well. Absolutely fantastic model. Uh, Laurie Turner has one of these painted up. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen painted. It's painted up pretty much in this colour scheme here. Uh, and it just looks incredible. The crew at the back look great. It is a beautiful model. It really is nice. Um, so... 100 points for the Hydra. Uh, the weapon is a Hydra quad auto cannon, which is zero, and you just got to pay for your heavy bolter. So, again, 108 points. Fantastic. Very good. Usual stat line. Heavy eight. Strength seven minus one, two damage. Add one to your hit rolls against units that can fly. Subtract units from units against all other targets. So, excellent for taking on things like. Um, Jet bikes, tower crisis battle suits, units that can fly, and really good, and uh, aren't hard to hit, so you'd be on freeze to hit. Nice. Again, I give him a hunter killer missile, and the usual rules uh, for the Hydra there as well. Very, very good indeed. These supporting tanks, tanks are fantastic for the guard. Really good. Ah, oh, the Manticore, another fantastic looking model. I love all of these. These are excellent models to collect. They do look great. 
Yeah, for, for tanks, guard are, the, guard are the best. They are the best. But looks wise, I'm talking about them, they just look great. Uh, so, Menticore then. He's 125 points. Storm Eagle Rockets, zero. So it's all incorporated in the cost. You've just got to pay for your heavy bolter. And he's got four of these rockets. So, Storm Eagle Rocket, range 120, heavy 2d6. This is incredible. Strength 10, AP minus 2, and D3 damage. The rate of firepower uh, is fantastic. This weapon can target units not visible. Again, model can only fire a single Storm Eagle rocket per turn. Each Storm Eagle rocket can only be fired once per battle. Right, so you gradually work your way through those. Um, again, I take a Hunter Killer Missile, uh, Heavy Bolter, and the usual rules for them as well. Manticore, Manticore Tank, brilliant. Very, very good indeed. So, another good option as well. It's a shame, you sort of take one of each, you wouldn't quite look right. You'd but I really would love to because they're all really quite good. Uh, Death Strike then, next. Power levels, by the way, uh, is six, seven for the Hydra, eight for the Manticore, nine for the Death Strike. So it gradually rises up there in cost. Basilisk is seven, heavy weapons are three. Usual stat line for the Death Strike. Um, the Death Strike itself is 155 and no doubt the Death Strike Missile is zero yet. So this is the more expensive, you add your Heavy Bolter on top. Range 200, Heavy 3d6. So you're looking at about 10 attacks with this on average. This weapon can only be fired once per battle. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. Each time you hit the target with this weapon it suffers a mortal wound. <gasps> After resolving all damage on the unit, or a d6 for every other unit within six on a four plus, the unit also suffers D3 mortal wounds. Horrid. Utterly, utterly horrid. God. <laughs> it's incredible. Alright, so that's a horrible weapon. Now, what's great about this, I'm just thinking tactically, a lot of armies now play tightly packed because of the bonuses of different characters and so on. Imagine this thing targeting a unit in the dead centre of the opponent's force and then getting those other mortal wounds on units within six inches. You could cause horrendous trouble with that. And then even tactically, if your opponent knows that's coming, and you force him to spread out all over the place, it can disrupt his uh, deployment as well. So, Death Strike's very, very nasty indeed. Very, very nasty indeed. The hour is nine. The Death Strike missile cannot be fired normally in the shooting phase or during Overwatch. In one of your shooting phases, if you wish to fire the Death Strike or D6 and add the battle round number, if the, score, if the result is eight or more, you can fire the Death Strike missile during the shooting phase. For example, on the third battle round, a five plus would be needed to fire the Death Strike. Oh dear, <laughs> trouble here. You're not allowed to fire it on turn one. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Turn two, you'd need a six. Turn three, you'd need a five. And then by then, you'd probably be dead. <laughs> so, I don't know, oh dear, difficult, difficult. Yeah, or you'd be playing hide and seek for a while, you know, driving about trying to survive. Yeah, that would put me off the death strike. Don't like that, that would really put me off. Massive incentive for the opponent <laughs> to chase that thing down and destroy it. Plus, the most damage you can do is in the early turns when your opponent's the most tightly packed and has the most stuff on the table, so sort of, as the time goes by, you know, by turn three or four when this rocket's fired, the opponent's maybe lost most of his stuff anyway, so it may be not such a good idea taking the death strike. So I would say no to him. I would say Manticore, definitely Hydras are... Mm, no, I would say Manticore. I would prefer Manticore and the Wyvern. Those two I would go for. And uh, the Basilisk as well. Those three. Basilisk. And support and the Wyvern would be my three favourites, I reckon. Yep. That's for sure. Okay, so that's that. Right, so Lehman Rust Battle Tanks then. We've already covered the rules for these uh, with the tank commander. Yep, stat lines are all the same, it's just that your ballistic skill is going to be 4 plus, is affected as you take damage, quite crucially. Grinding Advance, we've already seen. 
uh, we've covered all of these rules, we've covered all of the options here. Um, so uh, maybe what combinations would go for? The emphasis would be on the turret weapon, in which case my choice is, I've talked about this already, would be battle cannon, demolish a cannon. I reckon. Yep. Eradicator's not bad. The plasma turrets. Not bad as well. Yes. No, I'm tempted to take that. They're all pretty good. But the focus would be on the turret. And there may be minimal expense there on the sponsons. If taking any sponsors. Well, I like them. I, the look of them, I like them all with sponsons. Um, so I'd probably go heavy bolters all around. Something like that. If I'm expecting trouble, go heavy flames all around. Yep. That's the way I play it, I think, with them. Punisher sounds a lot. You know, heavy 40 if you if you restrict your movement, but there's no minus on the AP and well. Yeah. Because really, like heavy 40, for example, really only equals 20 hits. It's the kind of Logic I'm thinking of here, but still it's all right. Vanquisher's a bit volatile, as in just a bit of a one-hit wonder, one shot only. A bit risky with that one, so I don't think I'd go for that. I'll take the battle cannon, the demolisher. Okay, so that's it for them. That's regularly rushes. Uh, I'm not skipping these. I'm not, I'm not cutting short with these because I think they're rubbish. Uh, I've already covered sort of all the rules already um, from the tank commander. Uh, but no, a rate rust is for sure. They're much better than they were now. Uh, still, they struggle with ballistic skill, but this has been improved, but just they can double the shots with the turret. Excellent fix there. And that makes them very, very mean indeed. They're exceptionally tough, 12 wounds. The toughness eight really helps them out. So definitely a choice to take uh, for uh, your army as well. And uh, James sort of plays them. I've seen him playing with mixed turret options and, up, uh, and upgrades. Seems fine, seems to work really well. So that's maybe a route that I would go down as well. Okay, that's that one. Um, if you want to go for the ultimate tank buster, then I'd go for uh, demolisher cannon, laser cannon on the front, and then two multi melters on the sponsons. That's nasty. It is nasty. So that's that's the, sort of the tank buster combination I'd go for uh, for that one, and a hunter killer <laughs> on top as well. Okay, so that's that one. It's power level 10 for them, by the way. Uh, transport then, we're on to dedicated transport. Chimera is 10 wounds, free up save. Movement 12. Uh, we've covered all these weapons. Got access to, you can replace heavy bolt with heavy flamer. You can take, uh, replace the multi laser with heavy flamer, heavy bolter. And you may take items from the equipment list. And again, I definitely give a hunter killer to these. And then your transport is 12 models. So you take, you can take Ogrins, they take up three models. So you can take a unit of three Ogrins and a character of some kind. Yep. Yep, no good. Veteran, heavy weapons, heavy weapons, yeah, no, cool. No, stick like a veteran squad in there, no problem at all. Uh, no, great, okay, so that's Chimera. Get an idea of your points cost. Your multi laser comes in at 10. And the Chimera itself is 75. Still expensive compared to 7. But vehicles are more durable now than they were. So it's it's equaled out, it's fair. Looking at about 85, 90. 90 odd points. With a standard loadout, multi laser, 90, 100, 100 points. Multi laser, heavy bolter, hunter killer. About 100 points. Is that worth it? Is it worth it for limited firepower? Hmm. Maybe you need chimeras, really. I think they've fallen out of favour. I don't see them as often as I used to. You can't field them as cheap as you used to be able to. They're virtually double the cost. That's the kind of. Downside for them. Tower Ox will cover in the future. Uh, Codex review for them in the Tyrant and Tempest is Tarox Prime as well. Uh, the Valkyrie I'll cover here, it does go with them, but you can also take it for regular guard as well. James is a big fan of the uh, Valkyrie here uh, also. So, uh, regular Valkyrie then is 110 points. 
you can take one of them or up to two more. Now I'm doing the multi laser, which is 10 points, and then the health strike missiles. And if they charge you, health strike missiles is just 20 for the lot, not each. So 140 points total. 14 wounds, wow. They've given it a nice lot of wounds. Strength, 7 toughness, 7, 3 attacks. Uh, free up safe. The things that drop is your movement, but it's still pretty quick. 20 to 45, 20 to 30 are just 20. Uh, there. Then ballistic skill drops, yeah, from 4 plus to 5 plus to 6 plus. You've got to be aware of. So the reason why you take this is your uh, ability to move somewhere. Um, disadvantage of these is I suppose you can't... No. Um, you can't hold it off the board, so it's a bit vulnerable. Mm. So again, falling out of favour to some degree with these as well. Hellstrike missiles. It's heavy one. Right, so it restricts you. You can't say I'm going to fire all four. It's just Hellstrike missiles is heavy one. So it's just one shot a turn. Range 72, strength 8, minus 2, d6 damage. It's the same. Roll two dice, choose the best, or discard the lowest. It's pretty much the same as an killer missile, which is six points, and you could stick that on a vehicle somewhere. <laughs> so, not that amazing. Um, no. You take the last cannon, you're going to pay 20 instead of 10. Uh, you can replace the Hellstrike missiles with two multiple rocket pods. So that's multiple rocket pods, that's going to be um, power level 8, by the way. Uh, that's going to be 2d6 shot, strength 5 minus 1. Again, not that deadly. Vehicle squadron, you need to set them up within six of each other, then you're separate after that. You've got your grav shoot insertion models may disembark for the model at any point, but if the Valkyrie moves more than 20, you must roll d6 for each model and a one. Model slain. Models that disembark in this manner must be set up more than nine inches from enemy models. Hover jet. Yeah, this is awkward here. Models that disembark on a one, that model is slain. So if you're thinking of like a veteran squad, you would have to roll separately for your special weapons, potential of them to die. I think you'd have to take off that particular model. I believe that's the interpretation there. Hover jet. Before this model moves in movement phase, you can declare it will hover. This movement characteristic becomes 20 until the end of the phase, and it loses the airborne, hard to hit, and supersonic abilities to the beginning of your next movement phase. Roving gunship. If this model hovers in its movement phase, add one to hit rolls in the following shooting phase. Cool. Airborne, uh, this model cannot charge, can only be charged by units that can fly and can only attack or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly. It's hard to hit, so it's minus one if you're flying. Supersonic, each time it moves, you pivot up to 90 and then move the model straight forwards. You can't pivot again. If you advance, this movement characteristic is an extra 20. Crash and burn, usual rules for that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't bother, I don't think, with the Valkyrie. Um, how would you reach your opponent's objectives? The way I see guard playing that is um, using orders to make infantry advance really quick. The opponent comes forward with his attacking force, um, he's reduced down his effectiveness, and then as that's happening, guard units are sneaking using order moves to sweep round onto objectives. That's cool, a good way of doing it. You can go for uh, an armoured advance with your tanks um, or you can just pound distant objectives with mortars and other artillery uh, models. So that's another option there as well. That's maybe how I'd play it. Yep. So Valkyrie, you know, what can happen is you think, right, I need some speed. Uh, take, Valkyrie, take a Valkyrie and then you equip them with a unit and your opponent thinks, right, well there's the fast option. Uh, the guard player has, targets it, destroys it, and all of a sudden you're stuck. So I'd maybe spread that ability around just to have all the, all the army can advance if it needs to. Something like that. Right, so we're on to the big nasty super heavy tanks now. The uh, Bane Blade, first of all. So we'll catch the stats for this, and then it's roughly going to be the same, and then we'll look at the unique weaponry combinations for these. Uh, 
eight power points for the Valkyrie, 28 power level for the Bane Blade. It's 390 points. You've got to pay for your auto cannons, 15 points. The Bane Blade cannon is zero, it's absorbed in. The Demolisher cannon, you'd have to pay another 40 points. Uh, and then Avantium tracks for melee is zero, just checking. Twin Heavy Bolter is. Uh, 14. Yeah, okay. So, three knives, 400, 500, 500 odd points you're looking at for a bone blade. Strength 9, toughness 8, 26 wounds, phenomenal amount of wounds. Leadership 8 and a free up save. What's affected is your movement starts at 10, it drops all the way down to 4. 9 attacks, this is something to bear in mind with these big uh, super heavy tanks and the ballistic skill can be affected. So, I'm just going to go down the unique ones here, which is, we'll do the tracks here in combat, strength for the user, which is 9, AP minus 2 and D3 damage, it's nasty enough in close combat. Remember that's 9 attacks there, so it can stand up for itself pretty good. Uh, so the Bane Blade Cannon, 72 inch range, heavy 3D6, strength 9, AP minus three and free damage. It's horrid. Yeah, that's hor That's a horrible weapon. Okay. You can take a hunter killer, I probably would. Uh, this model may take a storm bolter or heavy stubber. Could do. Um, this model may take either two sponsons or four sponsons. Each sponson is equipped with a laser cannon and either oh, with a laser cannon, uh, you have to take the laser cannons, so that's 40 points set on top, and either a twin heavy bolter or a twin. Heavy Flamer. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think I would. Big gun platform, max out the firepower. The explodes result is different here. It's uh, on a six, it explodes. It's units have been 2d6, suffer d6 mortal wounds. It's nasty when this thing blows up. Smoke launchers uh, are available. Still a behemoth. Or behemoth, whichever way you say it. This model does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. Excellent. This model can fall back and still shoot. Brilliant. Can also still fire its weapons if enemy units are within an inch of it, but only its twin heavy bolter or twin heavy flame can target units within an inch of it. Its other guns must target other units. Mm. Oh, I see. Cool. Yeah. Very, that's good. It's very fluffy, that. That's really good. So if units are within melee with it, you're able to fire, it makes sense, you have heavy bolters, heavy flame, but they're the things that are protecting the perimeter. And the other weapons are free to fire off at different targets, you know, not affected, you know, a gaunt that's charged in. And your base contact is not preventing this thing from firing, which is... Well, they fought this through here, very, very good. In addition, this model only gains a bonus to its save in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the fire, which is perfectly reasonable. It's a regular Bane Blade. Fantastic, okay. So the Bane Hammer is a bit cheaper, it's 26 power points, or power level, it's, it's power level, power level is 26, stat line's all the same. So, you've got an idea of the points costs here for these, it's about 500, probably going to be slightly less for the Bane Hammer. Um, so, oh yeah, this is the one with the deck, the transport capacity, yeah, okay. So the Tremor Cannon. Is range 60, heavy 3d6, strength 8, minus 2, free damage. If units hit by this weapon in the following movement phase, they must halve the movement characteristic and cannot advance. God, slow you down, it really does. So, yeah, nasty enough, decent enough. Um, sponsors all available. So, you've got a firing deck here. Up to 10 models being transported by a Bane Hammer can shoot in the shooting phase. Measuring drawing line of sight from any point on the vehicle. Units that shoot in this manner count as having moved if they or the Bane Hammer moved in the preceding movement phase. So, yeah, you could stick all your heavy weapons teams inside. Wow. Cool. Uh, still a Behemoth. We've already covered that. So, you can transport up to 25 each heavy weapons team. Uh, or veteran weapons team counts as two. Algrins take up three. Great. Bane Hammer's. Pretty good as well. They're all good. They are all good. 
And it's a nasty enough weapon. Heavy 3D6 string pain monster. Yeah, I mean if you want to if you want to go for transport and protection for units and the ability to still let them fire, then take the vein hammer because his main weapons comparable to the vein blade really. But I guess with the vein blade you are getting the demolisher cannon just there, but it's not much of a loss. Yeah, the bane hammer's bane hammer's good. Yep, no problem at all. Right, the Bane Sword. The Bane Sword, 390, that's all 390. Okay, so the Bane Sword then, same stat line. And the options here is armed with a Quake Cannon. Range 140, heavy 2d6, strength 14, AP minus 2, d6 damage. It's AP minus 4, sorry. And rolling on the weapons damage table, treat any rolls of 1 and 2 as 3. So guaranteed 3 damage. Then it's heavy 2d6. Nasty weapon. Quake cannon is nasty. Yep, so nasty enough. Okay, so that's that one. We'll move on to uh, power level 26 for that one. Power level 27 next for the Doom Hammer. Uh, that fires the Magma Cannon. Range 60, heavy 2d6, strength 10, minus 5, d6. If you're in half the range, you, which is 30 inches, <laughs> then uh, it's 2d6, uh, discard the lowest result. So nasty enough as well with the Doom Hammer. Uh, firing deck available for him, uh, as we've covered already uh, before. So next one is the Hell Hammer. So Hell Hammer's power level 30. And that one comes with the Hellhammer Cannon, 3d6, range 36, uh, strength 10, minus 4, free damage, units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus to saving throws for cover. And that is about it for that one. I'm not sure which one to choose here, uh, here we go, wait till we cover this one here, the Shadow Saw, which is uh, power level uh, 26 for him. Uh, so, the Volcano Cannon, range 120, 3d3, so between 3 and 9 shots, strength 16, shoot twos to wound a land raider. Now I thought I'd say the, never thought I'd say that, <laughs> but it is strength 16. AP minus 5, so the land raider doesn't even get a save, and <laughs> the damage is 2d6. You can reroll foul wound rolls when targeting titanic units with this weapon. Oh, all right, so you definitely bring one of these to an apocalypse game. Wow, that is so, so powerful. Right, and then uh, Shadow Sword targeters here, have 120 hit rolls you make for this model for shooting attacks that target titanic units. So a massive incentive there uh, for going after titanic units as well. He's the deadliest, I think, uh, but they're all pretty good. I'd maybe choose him, I think, would be the main one, I reckon. And, and then I uh, the regular Bane Blade, Bane Hammer as well I like, uh, but they're all pretty good. So that is the Super Heavies. No, nope, there's more. <laughs> this is Storm Lord here as well, and the Storm Sword as well. So there's, there's two more, so many options here to cover uh, with these, which is great to be able to configure these uh, here. So Storm Lord uh, to cover next. All right, so uh, just continuing on, change of location here, um, just finishing off this Codex review. So, uh, Stormlord is next here. Uh, so, this one is powered at level 26, and the main weapon is the Vulcan Mega Bolter. It's range 60, heavy 20. Uh, remember, the ballistic skill is only 4+, plus, and it's strength 6, minus 2, and then two points of damage, so pretty good. Uh, just there, and it's transport capacity. This one's 40 astromilitarium units uh, or models for uh, this super heavy. Uh, extended firing deck up to 20 models being transported by Stormlord can shoot in their shooting phase, measuring and drawing on a sight for any point in the vehicle. Units that shoot in this manner count as having moved if they or the Stormlord moved in the preceding movement phase. Okay, there he is, just there. Does look pretty good. So nasty enough, just there. Okay, so just basically a double Avenger Gatling cannon, really very similar to that. Next one, and it's the last super heavy. It's the Storm Sword. 
Uh, it's power level 26. And then the main weapon is the Storm Sword Siege Cannon. It's only range 36. Yeah, maybe one of the weaker weapons this one. Range 36, heavy 2d6, strength 10, uh, AP minus 4, and then d6 points of damage. So it's nasty enough, uh, but the range is quite limited on that one. You need to stack plus weapon, uh, get no bonuses for cover, and your real damage rolls of 1 for this weapon as well, just to make it a bit more reliable, and that's the Storm Sword. Alright, so that's those two. Uh, then you've got the armory here, we've covered pretty much all of these weapons, melee weapons, other war gear, all covered in here as well, big spread, big battle going on here against the Tyranids. Right, so Regimental Doctrines, I'm glad they've done this, um, I'd love to have seen separate books though for these different regiments, there's some nice plastic kit releases, it'd be great, maybe Games Workshop will do that in the future, really hope they do, uh, and then uh, that, that would be fantastic. So, regimental doctrines across here. Um, just as notes on the, on the uh, Meditime Tempestus, and then advisors and auxiliary, just the structure of the way you organise uh, the units just there. Okay. So, we'll just go straight into these regimental doctrines, I think. Defenders of Humanity, right, so they get that uh, objective secure, which has been rolled out for all of the factions. So, uh, Caddy and Born soldiers then. Real hit rolls are one in the shooting phase for units of this doctrine if they did not move in the previous movement phase. If an infantry unit with this doctrine is, has issued the take aim order and did not move, it can reroll all failed hit rolls for the unit until the end of the fight or until the end of the phase. So just adding to the reliability there of their shooting, that's the aim there for the Caddians. Then uh, Catacan brutal strength. Infantry units of this doctrine have one to their leadership to their strength characteristic. In addition, they can add one to their leadership characteristic if they're within six or a friendly Catacan officer. Plus one to their strength. Huh. Strength four there. So they're more sort of reflecting the muscle men style for them. Each time a vehicle this doctrine fires a ranged weapon that makes a random number of attacks, uh, for example, heavy D6, you can re roll one of the dice used to determine the number of attacks made. Brilliant. That's really, really good. That is a fantastic doctrine there for the Catacan. It's really, really good. The ability to re-roll the dice can make the firepower a lot more reliable. So you get that dreaded one, you can just re-roll it. You don't have to ex ex uh, use up your command points and so on to do that. So that's a very, very good regimental doctrine, that one. All right, the Valhallans. Grim Demeanor. Infantry units of this doctrine halve the number of models that flee, rounding up if they fail a morale test. Vehicles with this doctrine that have a damage table double the number of wounds they have remaining for the purpose of determining what their characteristics are. So that one's not bad, I'd say the Catacan one's better. The Vostroyan heirloom weapons. Units of this doctrine add six to the maximum range of heavy or rapid fire weapons they fire, which would normally have a range of 24 or more. Okay, so not bad, and heading on to the range. These aren't well, all of these here, none of them are weak, they're pretty significant. Armageddon, here yeah, still losing industrial efficiency. Infantry units of this doctrine may double the number of attacks they make with rapid fire weapons at a range of up to 18, rather than half the weapon's range as normal. Vehicles of this doctrine treat attacks against them with an AP of minus one as having AP zero. Okay, interesting that one. An interesting combination they've gone for there. I mean, they're all designed to reflect the, the storyline and the fluff behind each of these regiments. Right, Talon, swift as the wind. Infantry units of this doctrine can advance and still shoot any weapon type except heavies, heavy weapons. When they do so, they do not suffer the usual penalties to hit rolls for assault weapons. Okay, so it's encouraging you to move quickly. Vehicles with this doctrine do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. If a titanic vehicle with this doctrine advances, it treats all heavy weapons as equi it is equipped with as assault weapons until the end of the turn. Okay, so just encouraging to be mobile on the, on the move. And then, Militarum Tempestus. I'm going to skip that one. Mordium Prey Drill. 
if the base of every model in an infantry unit is with this doctrine is touching the base of at least one other model from the same unit, the unit has plus one leadership, you can have one to the hit rolls made for models in that unit when firing overwatch. You can add one to hit rolls made for vehicles of this doctrine when firing overwatch if they're within three inches of one or more other friendly model unit vehicles. So just a bit of protection there on overwatch for the Mordian parade drill. Okay, so the Cadian one's okay, Cadican one's pretty good. Say so those two. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go on to, to stratagems here. We'll see if there's any uh, powerful ones here that the guard can use. So Vortex Missile is the first one. Three command points. And the great thing about Astra Militarum is often you can form an army that's got lots of command points that you're able to use. So, you know, if some of these are quite expensive in command points, you know, you got, I mean, James has filled an army with like 15 command points, so. Or maybe it's about 11, but there's still a lot of command points to use up. So the first one here is Vortex Missile. It's three command points, it is expensive. Units of this strategy, uh, use this strategy before you fire a Death Strike Missile. You can reroll failed hit rolls for the shot. In addition, add one to the roll made to determine whether other units within six are hit. If a model is wounded but not slain by the attack, another roll another dice on a six, the model suffers a further D6 mortal wounds. So, it's just a boost that one there if you're taking that unit uh, with the death strike uh, fire on my position is three command points these are expensive here use a stratagem when the last model is slain from astro time unit from your army equipped with a vox caster before removing the model roll d6 for each unit within three inches on a four plus that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds oh, okay that's cool so you're calling in a barrage on that the location of the radio it's just like out of a movie. <laughs> That's quite cool. Fire on my position. Okay, cool. Uh, crush them is next. Use this strategy at the start of the charge phase. Select an extra time vehicle unit from your army. This unit can charge even if it advances this turn. The following fight phase attacks made by this unit hit on a 2 plus. Okay. Pretty good. I need a, a one point to do that. Aerial spotter. Use this strategy at the start of the shooting phase. Select a basilisk or wyvern model from your army. You can reroll failed hit rolls for the unit in that phase. That's pretty good. It's two command points, but reroll hits pretty helpful. Yeah, you know, stratagems help out just at that point where you need some kind of boost, and you can just pay out the points here uh, to gain access to these uh, jury rigging. One command point. Use this strategy at the start of your turn. Select an extra military vehicle in your army. It cannot move, charge or pile in this turn, but immediately heals a wound. That's it. You may just need that though to perhaps push, get up to us from one damage bracket to another. But uh, one command point. Okay. D3 might have been better. One command point is very insignificant. Solid consolidate squads. Use this strategy at the end of your movement phase. Choose an infantry squad from your army that is within two inches of another of your infantry squads from the same regiment. You can merge these squads into a single unit and then treat it as such for the rest of the battle. Helpful. Say you've got a veteran squad and you've been stripped down, you've got three melters left, they're very vulnerable. You could merge them with another unit and then that, that asset, those uh, special weapons, are then better protected. I need a command point to do it. Or, wow, I mean, for example, another great example, you've got a heavy weapons team, a Laz Cannon heavy weapons team. Uh, you've got a unit of conscripts or uh, regular infantry, you merge them together and you protect the Laz Cannons that way. So that is helpful. That is very, very helpful, that one. It's only one command point to do it. Excellent. Then uh, Imperial Commander's Armory, this is the one uh, where you get your extra relics, pay out the command points for those. Uh, Officio Perfectus Command Tank, two command points. Use this strategy at the start of the first battle round before the first turn begins. Select Liam Russ from your army. All friendly Astromeda Time units have a leadership characteristic of nine, unless it would otherwise be higher, whilst they're in six of this vehicle, so morale boost. Uh, mobile Command Vehicle is one command point. Use this strategy at the start of any turn. 
choose a chimera from your army until the end of the turn. An officer from your army of the voice of command ability may still issue orders whilst embarked upon that chimera. Measuring, range, measuring ranges from the vehicle. He's treated as being within, in, within three inches of a Vox caster. Okay, so there's that option there. Uh, preliminary bombardment, two command points. Use this stratagem both after both sides have deployed before the first round begins. Roll a dice for each enemy unit on the battlefield on a six, they suffer a mortal wound. Can you use this stratagem once per battle? Pretty minor that one. Use up two command points to use it up. Hmm. Inspired Tactics is one command point. Use a stratagem after an officer from your army has issued an order or tank order. That, that officer may immediately issue an additional order. It's handy if you need it. Yep. Defensive Gunners. Use a stratagem when a charge is declared against one of your Ashtimil Time vehicles. When the unit defies Overwatch, it's a 5 or a 6 instead of a 6. That is helpful. That is helpful if you really need that. Okay. Then take cover, one command point. It's plus one to your armor saving throws, okay. Uh, plus one, uh, one command point then for grenadiers. No. Oh. So when you fire overwatch, up to ten models in the unit that are armed with grenades can fire a grenade this phase instead of only one. Ridiculous. It's very similar to the um, Death Guard strategy that they have. Grenadiers, all throwing grenades. Amazing. Yeah, really cool. Okay, so that one's fantastic. One command point. Brilliant stratagem. Fantastic stratagem. Really good. Fight to the death. It's one command point. Use this stratagem at the start of the morale phase. Pick an Astra Militari Infantry unit from your army that is required to take a morale test. You want a D3 rather than D6. Okay, that was okay. Go recon. One command point. Use at the start of your shooting phase. Select a unit of scout sentinels for army. This unit can immediately move 2d6 but cannot shoot or charge this turn. So, a little bit of extra move if you need it. Uh, Vengeance of Cadia. One command point. Use a strategy when you select one of your Astromeda Time units to shoot or fire overwatch. Reroll failed hit and wound rolls for models in this unit that target chaos units until the end of the phase. Wow. Okay, that one's quite helpful. You need to know these to remember to use them. There's another page of them here. Volley fire. One command point. Use a strategy before a Mordian infantry unit from your army shoots in the shooting phase. Each time you make a hit roll of a six from model on that unit, that model can immediately shoot again with the same weapon at the same target. It doesn't generate extra attacks. So volley fire for Mordians. The Cadians. Two command points for overlapping fields of fire. Use a stratagem after a Cadian unit from your army has inflicted an unsafe wound on an enemy unit in the shooting phase. You can add one to hit rolls for any other Cadian units from your army that target the same unit in this phase. Helpful. Yep, uh, decent enough. Send in the next wave for the Valhallans. Two command points. Use a stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select an infantry unit from your army. Excluding characters and infantry squads that have used the combined squad stratagem that was destroyed earlier in the battle. Set up this unit wholly within your deployment zone within six of the edge of the battlefield. More than nine inches away from any enemy models. Brilliant. The Valhalla's just recycle unit. Cool. Very, very cool. Then, uh, Firstborn Pride, one command point. This is the Vostrians. Use a stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select a Vostrian unit from your army. You can add one to hit rolls made of this unit to the end of the phase. Helpful. Yeah, not helpful enough. Uh, superior Intelligence. This is for Minotaur and Tempestus. We'll leave that one. Ambush is uh, for Talan. It's three command points. Ouch. Use a stratagem during deployment. Choose up to three Talan units to set up an ambush instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, these units can strike from hiding. Set them up so they're wholly within seven of any battlefield edge and more than nine inches from any models. That's brilliant. Very, very good. You can set, you know, three units, that's a proper ambush you can set up somewhere. Brilliant. That's really, really good, that one. Excellent theme. 
Very, very nice. Okay, and then Armoured Fist. One command point for Armageddon Steel Legion. Use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select an Armageddon infantry unit from your army that's disembarked from transport vehicle this turn. You can reroll hit rolls of one for that unit until the end of the phase. Okay. And then Vicious Traps for Catacans. Use this stratagem. When an enemy unit finishes a charge move of an inch uh, of one of your units, this whole even a terrain feature, all dice on a 4 plus. It's D3 mortal wounds. Pretty tame. No, tame enough that one. Tame as well. The Tatter one I think is fantastic. You do have to pay out the points for it, but it just adds really nice tactical uh, flexibility there. So that one's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So I love the Valen one as well. Send in the next wave. So Sykana, this will be interesting to see what kind of options you have. There's six now that the Codex is here for the Astra Militarum. So Terrifying Visions is the first one. It's a walk charge value of seven. If manifested, choose an, choose an enemy unit within 18. The unit subtracts two from its leadership till the start of your next turn. <sighs> it's not that great. Next one, Gaze of the Emperor. Gaze of the Emperor has a walk charge value of 6. If manifested, draw a straight line, 2d6, long, directly away from the side cut. Roll a dice for each model. In the centre of the line, 4+, plus, it suffers a mortal wound. Quite tame as well, that one. Yep, okay. Hmm. Psychic Barrier. The walk charge value of 6. If manifested, select a friendly Astra Militarum unit in 12. Uh, until the start of the next phase, add one to the same throws. Yep. And that's helpful enough. It's Astra Militarum units. It could be a vehicle as well, I believe, so you could boost a vehicle up as well with that one. That one's, that one's okay. That one's alright. They're all quite tame though at the moment. Night Shroud. Obviously, you've got Smite as well, which is a good power. So Night Shroud. It's a walk charge value of six. Manifested, choose a friendly astral in the time unit of 12. It's minus one to hit. Helpful enough. Yeah, it's okay. I wouldn't say any of these are particularly amazing. Um, mental fortitude. It's walk charge value of four. If manifested, select a friendly astral in the time unit of 12. To the start of your next psychic phase, it's auto pass for morale. Okay. Again. Well, it's all right. Psychic Maelstrom. Um, it's a walk charge value of 7. If manifested, select, a, select an enemy unit within 18 of the Psyker or D6. On a 2 plus, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Unless the mortal wound is negated, you can roll another dice and a 3 plus. The enemy unit suffers another mortal wound. Continue the process, adding 1 to the dice. So 4 plus, 5 plus, 6 plus. Until you foul or cause a mortal wound. Until you foul to cause a mortal wound, or the enemy unit is destroyed. That one's pretty good. That, I'd say that's the better one. What's great about this is you can play Smite and then play uh, another power. This one, so you've got a Psyker that can manifest two powers. He can do Smite and then he can do Psychic Maelstrom as well. Yeah, so it's like a double Smite effectively. So that one's quite nice. So probably go for that. But the rest of these are they're okay. Maybe plus one of the armor saves. Helpful for tanks. That's about it really for these. So not the best set of psychic powers I've seen. No, some ones that are okay, and then I'd say the Maelstrom. Just one of the better ones just there. All right, so relics next here. So Emperor's Benediction. It's Commissar or Lord Commissar with a bolt pistol, and it changes to range 12, pistol 3, strength 4, minus 1 and 2 damage. That's a nasty pistol. Uh, this weapon can target a character even if it's not the closest enemy unit unless the bearer is within an inch of an enemy unit. So it's not bad there, just a, a free swap out for a decent pistol. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Uh, Laurels of Command. Officer with voice of command ability only, roll a dice. Each time he issues uh, a friendly uh, regiment unit within six, issues an order to them. On a four plus, the bearer can immediately issue another order to the same unit. This does not count towards the maximum number of orders this model can issue each turn. That's really, yeah, that one's a good one. Getting to issue other, unit, um, other orders to the same unit. Nice. That one's cool. That one is good. 
Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Uh, Death Mask of Alanius. Infantry model only. The bearer of this item has a 4 plus invun. In addition, once per game at the start of any of your turns, the bearer made immediately heal D3 wounds. It's a good one as well. Yep, yeah, uh, good. The Dagger of Tussac. Tuss During deployment, you can set up the bearer and one infantry unit from your army behind enemy lines and place them on the battlefield. The infantry unit must have the same regiment keyword as the bearer. At the end of any of your movement phases, these units can launch their daring attack. Set them up within three inches of each other. Anywhere on the battlefield is wholly within six of an edge and more than nine inches from enemy models. So it's one, the one HQ and then, or the character, and then uh, a unit of your choice. Helpful enough. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, Kurov's Aquila. Officer only. Each time your opponent uses a stratagem or a five or a d6 and a five plus, you gain a command point. Wow! Brilliant. Very very good. There's some great relics here. Some of them fantastic. I mean that one's fantastic. Uh, Blade of Conquest replaces a power sword, gives you plus two strength, AP minus four, and d3 damage. That's a really good blade. Uh, Relic of Lost Cadia. Cadian only. The bearer can unveil this relic at the start of any turn. The end, till the end of that turn, you can reroll failed uh, hit and wound rolls of one for all Cadian units of in twelve. You can instead reroll all failed hit and wound rolls for these units till the end if they're fighting against chaos. That's all right. Uh, Mammoth tusk blade. It's for Katakan. It replaces the power sword and it's plus two strength, AP minus three, and two damage. Okay, that one's pretty good as well. There's some. Upgrade that. Your know, regular power sword, but this one's getting plus two strength. And you're damaging your dot here at damage capability as well. That one's a good one. Uh, Pietrov's MK45, uh, the Valhallen, bolt pistol only. Uh, it becomes strength four, AP minus one, and two damage. And friendly units within six can never lose more than one model as a result of morale tests. Okay. Uh, Armor of Graf Toshenko. So of Austrians, increase the toughness characteristic to 4 and the save to a 2 plus. Pretty good. Skull Mask of Acheron, Armageddon character only. Uh, enemy units within 3 inches are minus 1 to the leadership, Orcs is minus 2. Well, quite tame that one. Claw of the Desert Tigers, this is Talarn. Replaces the power sword, it's strength to use, it's AP minus 3 and 2 damage. Each time he fights, it's 2 additional attacks, this weapon. Nice. Okay, so you get some extra attacks. And you're doubling your, your damage rate with that one. Remember, these are all free of charge, so they're all good bonuses here. Uh, tactical Auto Reliquary of Tiberius. This is Tempestus. Order of the uh, Iron Star of Mordian. Uh, it's for Mordian infantry. Each time the bearer suffers a wound or a mortal wound on a four plus, the wound is negated and has no effect. Wow, that one's quite good as well. So, out of all of those, some of the weapon changes are pretty good. Yep. And that, the dagger's quite good when we get to uh, uh, the character, a uh, unit, infantry unit. Get to uh, ambush, set them up in ambush. Yeah, that's pretty good. Kurov's Aquila, great. Five plus, you rate every time your opponent uses a stratagem, five plus, and you gain a command point. That one's great. So now there's some fantastic ones in there. Yeah, no, there's some good ones. All right, so uh, warlord traits then for Ashton with time, and then Games Workshop, they have made some regimental warlord traits as well. So you, you've, it's helping you with the theme of your force, definitely. So Grand Strategist, whilst your warlord is alive, you can reroll a single hit roll, wound roll, save for open battle. In addition, if your army is battle forged and the warlord is on the battlefield, roll a dice for each command point spent when using stratagems on a 5 plus. The point is immediately refunded. That's a good one. That is a good one. That is good. Old Grudges, after deployment before the first battle round begins, choose unit in your opponent's army. You reroll failed wound rolls units from your army that target the unit uh, you choose whilst they're in six of your warlord. Okay. So 
easy to forget. You want ones that you, I mean, you'd remember that one, I reckon, because it's so important there, given the command points. You could easily forget old grudges. Implacable Determination. I think this one's going to be hard to beat. When your Warlord and a single friendly unit within three inches of them advances, they can both add six to their move for that movement phase instead of rolling a dice. Yeah, no. Um, Draconian Disciplinarian, career or foul brow tests for friendly units within six. Okay, yeah, and then Bellowing Voice, add three inches to the range of any abilities you Warlord. On the Warlord's data sheet, for example, or of discipline. Yeah, all quite tame. Grand Strategist is, I'm sure it's the most popular. That's why one's brilliant. Master of Command. Your Warlord gains the voice of command ability. If your Warlord already has a voice of command, they instead issue an extra order. Okay. Now, I would go with Grand Strategist every single time, I reckon. That one is the best one. Getting command points back is great, plus a little uh, re rolls available as well. So I'll go there, I reckon. Unless you, I could be persuaded off by some of these along here. So, um, okay. So, what I'll do, I'm just going to Militar and Tempestus down here as well. If they're not getting their own codex, which I'm not sure of the situation, if they don't get their own codex, I'll go back through this. Um, and go through these. So don't panic if I've missed this and then the codex uh, turns up. I'll do a separate review uh, based on this one, but I, I think they should get their own codex. But I'm not sure, I could be wrong on that, in which case I'll return and, and do the Militarum Tempestus units in a separate review. Uh, regimental Warlord traits then. Uh, Cadians. Roll dice each time your Warlord issues an order uh, or tank order. On a 4+, plus, the order can affect an additional cadian unit of the same type as the original within 6 of the Warlord. Okay, so a bit of a bonus there. Okay, so I would reckon I'd still stick with that Grand Strategist. Yeah, okay. We'll see. Uh, Catacan next. Lead from the front. Your Warlord can perform heroic intervention, intervention if, after the enemies complete all their charge moves, they're within 6 of enemy units. The Warlord can move up to 6 when performing heroic intervention as long as they end the move close to the nearest enemy model. In addition, if your Warlord charged, was charged, performed a rogue intervention until the end of the turn, they could all the hit rolls made for them. Could be helpful. Yeah, I still think overall, strategically, that one's better for that one. That's Catacan. Uh, Hallen, Tenacious. Royal dice each time your Warlord suffers a wound. On a 5+, plus, the wound is ignored. If the Warlord has the vehicle keyword, the wound is ignored. On a 6. Yes, helpful. I still think that one. Vostroyan. Reroll foul hit and wound rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by a warlord. If he's decent, that's on a duelist. If he's a decent model, that's really good. Reroll attacks and wounds. Wow. Armageddon. Uh, X gang leader. Add one to the warlord's attacks characteristic. In addition, add one to any wound rolls made for your warlord in the fight phase. That's pretty good. Pretty good bonuses here. Uh, depends what kind of HQ. If you've got a really good HQ, nice powerful one, then these are good enhancements. Uh, Talon then. Your Warlord and all friendly Talon units within six can charge even if they fell back that turn. Swift attacker. Interesting. Uh, Minotaur and Tempestus. Turn that one. Mordian. Um, skipping that one. And then Mordian here. Roll dice each time for each model that flees. Within six of your warlord on a four plus doesn't flake. That's weak. Weak enough. Um, just yeah. No, it's this one here. Okay. Yeah. Out of all of them, but uh, there's some interesting ones there. Encouraging you to collect the regiments, but just the models aren't there at the moment, which is a shame. You have to try and source out the the old lead models, and that's a nightmare. So looking forward to the day if and when uh, they start producing these in plastic would be fantastic okay and that is about it so you've got points values here and then uh, tactical objectives just there I usually skip this one people have been asking can you just include it so there's overkill on 11 here score a victory point in a master military vehicle unit in your armies destroyed an enemy unit during this turn 
If an Astra Militarum Titanic vehicle unit in your army destroyed an enemy unit in this turn, score D3 victory points instead. Cool. Overkill's good. Uh, regimental Pride. Number 12 uh, is score one victory point if an enemy character is slain as a result of an attack made by one of your regiment characters during this turn. Chain of Command, score one victory point if you issued three to five orders or tank orders this turn. If you ordered six or more, it's D3. Cool. Uh, troops on the ground, score D3 victory points if you controlled three to five objective markers with infantry units. If you control all six infantry, uh, with infantry units, it's D3 plus three victory points. And then Hammer of the Emperor, uh, roll or score one victory point if you destroyed an enemy unit that was controlling an objective marker at the start of the turn. That's quite good. And then death from afar. Score one victory point if an enemy unit that was wholly within their deployment zone at the start of your turn was destroyed by a unit wholly within your deployment zone at the start of the turn. Okay. So that is it. Alright, so that's the review then for Astra Militarum. Uh, they, the, the, the points, I, I think they're great value in points. The rate of fire now is drastically increased uh, for the Astra Militarum. Their tanks are tough enough as they are. You know, a lot of them are toughness 8. Plenty of wounds, deadly weaponry. Uh, so very, very strong in that regard. All of the super heavies laid out there nicely in detail so you can have one of them into your force. Um, and there's some units that really have improved. Borgrins, for example, massive improvement with them. Yeah, and then you've got now the bonuses of some, some great warlord traits, uh, some uh, some decent stratagems as well, and there's some excellent relics available. So all of that, combine all of that together, and it's been a massive enhancement for the Astra Militarum. Really, really good. You've got nice balance between able to pay out points to get nice gear, and then plenty of options to go for very cheap units to fill out your force as well. And then usually Astra Militarum got access to loads of command points, all, all in all. You know, structurally wise, Astra Militarum are very sound. I think very difficult to deal with now. Nasty amounts of firepower and usually a large force to try and deal with. So they've been a nightmare for a number of the games recently. Very difficult indeed. They look set to be one of the stronger uh, factions now with this new codex. But there it is, that's the review. Check out gamingfigures.com, that's where I've got mine from. Uh, or you can go to Games Workshop Direct uh, just there. But Gaming Figures, uh, they do the codex at a discounted rate as well as uh, a load of other Games Workshop, all the Games Workshop products reduced, and then uh, also other gaming systems as well, so you can check them out. But there it is, that's the review. Keep a look out for future reviews for the different codexes as they come along. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.